You're about to watch another exciting episode of The Dungeon Run. But did you know that you can actually be part of the adventure? Tune in live on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Pacific time, and you can make your voice heard and help determine the fate of our adventurers. Hope to see you there. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the final episode of the Sapphire Lights Festival. I so wanted to do this immediately after we taped the first one, but I botched my constitution save and got horribly sick. <laughs> but I'm feeling better, I'm feeling better. Uh, and we are ready to rock. We are ready to uh, um, shoot this. This is pre-recorded, so uh, there's not gonna be any advantages or disadvantages, uh, but if you wanna buy some balloons while this gets aired, please do so. Uh, I wanna jump right into the action. So we're gonna go ahead and introduce our lovely, amazing guests. Go ahead and say who you are, who you are playing, and if you wanna talk about uh, what you got when you leveled up, uh, by all means do so. Uh, let's start round robin. So go with uh, Unadi, why don't you start? Hi, um, I am Unadi. Uh, I am one third of three black halflings. Yes, I do do that thing uh, with Jeff Um And I am playing Layla Mittens. Meow. Um, and I leveled up and I got the lucky feet. Ooh, nice. Always what a good choice. And for those people at home that maybe haven't played a lot, what does the lucky lucky feet do? Uh, so I will let you know. Uh, oh, Lord, hang on. Wait, I moved away from that description. Hang on. There it is. It means I have three luck points for long rest. And whenever I make an attack roll, an ability check, or a saving throw, or when an attack roll is made against me, I can spend one to roll an additional d20 and choose which die to use. Um, and I can choose to spend luck points after I roll the die, but not before I see the outcome. Nice. It's almost like you have an advantage on a roll. Except yeah. there aren't any advantages this time because we're not doing this live. So it's a good uh, thing you took should, that feat. Y'all should have <laughs> taken it. Yeah. Up next, Jasper. Hello, I am Jasper. I am uh, another third of the Three Black Halflings, and I'm playing. <laughs> uh, I'm playing CC, uh, the uh, the changeling. Uh, the changeling bard and uh, when i leveled up uh, i also took the lucky feet <laughs> because you what? see yes. i what? not planned not coordinated but i think three black halflings were just in sync it's just i don't know what to say what do, yeah. uh, as unati was describing that i was like should i change quickly that seems <laughs> kind of ridiculous but uh but yeah no i also took the lucky feet so Embrace i was like I, I my thought process genuinely was hey there's gonna be no advantages here but jared yeah. still planned it like there is yeah. so it's true I, i'm gonna take the lucky feet okay Smart. all right I, I i respect that uh uh up next why don't we go with uh who's next on the order um, can you Sean, can you bounce back to the other screen so that I can do this correctly? Mm -hmm. Awesome. Oh, <laughs> Jessica, go ahead. Hi, I'm playing Elodie Dupont, who is a fairy ghost fairy trapped in a wooden, a creepy wooden doll's body. And um, I bumped up my stats, and um, I will be changing that right now to take the lucky feet. <clears throat> what? I'm kidding. <laughs> what? I'm not kidding. <laughs> You can't all take the lucky feet. Um, okay, beautiful. Uh, Trisha, you're There's looking- There's no rule against that. This is true. You're, <laughs> you're looking very lovely today. What? Warlock. Yeah, you're a warlock. Oh, it's, it's down here anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Trisha, take it away. Hello, everybody. Um, I am excited to be back playing Kaylee Guitar and uh, a Ladrin swashbuckler who is entirely in it for the fame. Uh, not so much the fortune, much more the fame. Um, but uh, I, when I leveled up Kaylee, I chose not the lucky feat, but the defensive duelist defeat. Oh, perfect. So I now I now have a, a defensive reaction should anyone come at me with a melee attack. Yeah, oh, nice. Should should a random evil swashbuckler turn around and decide to try to stab you? <laughs> Potentially, maybe name the blue devil. Yeah. 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 In a Jared uh, game, that would never happen. Yeah. Swashbucklers, what are those? Uh, Katie, I love the mustache. Take it Hello, away. Hello, it's Aten's mustache. I am Aten Archimbold the second, so not the first. The first was my father. He was terrible, cut off lots of heads, but I don't do that. Uh, I did not take the lucky feet because I did not think about it. I took the mobile feet. 
Uh, mm -hmm. And for those of you who don't know, it means I speed increases by 10 feet. I use the dash action uh, on difficult terrain. It doesn't cost extra movement on that turn. And when I make a melee attack against a creature, I don't. they don't provide opportunity attacks from that creature for the rest of the turn, whether I hit or not. So, you know, it's helpful. Such, such yeah. good, such good. It's, a, it's a great feat. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a stalwart. All right, um, that's it. Uh, a stalwart. I, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's gonna be like, you know, it, the good thing about this being pre-taped is that at some point there's going to be a jump cut in the edit. That's the moment where I'm no longer in the game. Where, where Katie snaps and she swears like a sailor. And since this is su supposedly family friendly, we'll have to edit that out. And then Katie won't be sitting in her seat anymore. It'll just be the, the five of us playing at that point. Mm -hmm. um, another so, third like, of the like three. Like the five playhouse. of us? Yeah. yeah. Or just the five of us and Katie's massage? Yeah. yeah, there you go. Just the mustache. Just the there mustache. you go. I love it. Uh, okay, let's let's get to it. Let's jump into this. Uh, Sean, or actually, uh, uh, Unani, would you be so kind as to let Sean know that he may light the torch? Oh, uh, Sean, uh, you may light the torch, my good sir. special credit to Ron Ogden who did the opening to that. Uh, thank you, Ron. You're amazing. You're a super talented, uh, incredible human being. We love you. All right, let's start this. Bard, thief, swashbuckler, warlock, paladin, Cece, Layla, Kaylee, L.O.D., Otten. These are the adventurers that have been chosen to rescue the town of Claire de Lune. Doom has come knocking after 100 years asleep in the forgotten abyss. Will they discover the slumbering evil in time to stop it? Or will the city be drowned in lakes of poisoned blood? The mystery of an ancient race revealed just in time for Fet de Lumiere du Saphir, the Sapphire Lights Festival. Steel rakes across leather, poison dribbles from a vial. Muskets fire and emit clouds of smoke, panicked screams and shouts for guards, psychotic giggles mixed with joyful hoots and hollers, magical enchantments and hellfire burst forth. All the while a plump mare lays bleeding on hard cobblestone. You all sweat profusely as your body heat rises, your heart pounds, your mind is a blur with what just happened and before you stand several opponents poised to strike. Let the battle begin anew. And we're going to go straight to the map room on that note. Um, wow, Jared. <laughs> I'm so like glad this isn't live because you'd right be there. getting so many advantages right now. <laughs> yeah. We'd, be, we'd wow. already be dead. Like, I'm yeah, so for sure. Dead. Jared, was that your in a world movie trailer voice? Yeah, like in a yeah. world. Yeah, a little bit, a little bit. There's a little bit in there. Cool. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, we're we're in the middle of combat, folks. Yeah. We yeah, ended we on a cliffhanger with a creepy little girl who is putting some poison on a blade after she mm -hmm. tried to stab Layla Mittens. Mm -hmm. um, other things worth noting, uh, there's a little uh, goon by the name of Dogberry who seems to be frightened of Elodie's um, creepy uh, wooden doll character. Um, the Blue Devil, uh, also known as Hotspur, um, is quite wounded, but he seems to still be kicking. Uh, there's two dead guards 
Laertes, who's the other goon that works for Hotspur, is bleeding out on the ground. Uh, the mayor also made a saving throw and is barely alive. Um, but laying on top of the mayor is um, Lady Marguerite Anjou, who uh, is a lovely uh, lordess, lady. Mm-hmm. We'll say lady. Um, who's who s- is seemingly seemingly trying to protect the mayor, but who has also cast a spell or tried to cast a spell on Miss Layla Mittens, mm-hmm. um, because it seems like everyone has a thing against Miss Mittens. <laughs> maybe I mean, like, it's because like I came, yeah, I came yeah, maybe it's because your performance uh, <laughs> agitated I can, them. I did come in hot. <laughs> <laughs> I did bring the fire, so. Yeah. so. You know. If you bring the fire, then comes the yeah. souls, yeah. right? Yes. I did uh, immediately insult all of the, the lords and ladies. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you did do that. You did do that. Uh, another thing worth mentioning is that uh, Fitz, a.k.a. CC, a.k.a. a bunch of other character names that I'm forgetting <laughs> right now, uh, out-suggestioned the already-suggestioned musketeer. Um, yep. So that's still a thing. And there's also... <laughs> Panic, pandemonium, pandemonium, I can't talk today. That's not going to be good for this recording. <laughs> pandemonium, uh, hey. a bunch of drunken goblins, and a mule hanging out over in the corner. Barbary? Don't forget. Barbary. Barbary the mule. Never forget the mule. Uh, so let's jump right into it. Uh, I did do some homework, and I um, went back and found everyone's initiative. Uh, and where we're at in the initiative order. Oh, nice. Uh, and oh. right now, we are actually going to start with Dogberry, who is the goon who is frightened um, and does not like Elodie very much. So Dogberry uh, screams, much like a little girl, uh, and then, uh, or a little boy, um, and then runs <laughs> Thank you. directly, yeah, I'm trying to be fair, uh, runs directly away from you, Elodie. Uh, you will get an attack of opportunity if you so choose. And I have to do it with my um, my dagger, right? Since uh, you can't cast a spell melee. Yes, part. unless you have the warcaster feet, you have to use a melee attack. Chill touch is a melee attack, isn't it? Uh, yes, but you need warcaster to do oh, it because no. it's a spell. Yeah. It's ranged. Yeah. Oh, you can't even do a melee spell. You can't do any kind of spell unless oh. unless you have Warcaster. Wow. That's that's why Morgan took it. One of the reasons why Morgan took it. All right, I'll, I'll hit him with my dagger. Okay, go ahead and give it a roll. Okay, um, let's see, eleven plus. What do I add? My strength or my dex? Uh, yeah, whichever one's better. Um, let's see, plus two, 13 to hit? Uh, this guy's just a basic thug, so yes, you do, you do hit Yay! him with a 13. Yay! Okay. And I'll give him a tiny, teeny tiny little bit of damage. Let's see what this does. Two, three, four, piercing. Yeah, that's, uh... That's not a that's not a, a little hit on cut his ankles uh, on this a, guy. Cut, cut his, his ankles. Achilles, Achilles wow. tendons. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I'm gonna say dome. I'm gonna say you you stab his his thigh uh, as he's running away from you because um, right. you didn't quite do that much damage, but you did mm-hmm. do some damage. So you stick him in the thigh as he's running away, which causes him to run <gasps> all the faster. Um, <laughs> He is not going to flee completely, but he is going to go over in that corner and cower. And that is his turn. So up next is uh, the brave Lord Otten Archambaum. Hello. Yes. Yes. Okay, uh, so the mayor is right next to me, yes? Correct, yeah. Um, Okie dokie. He's laying on the ground and technically, here, I'll go ahead and move her. Technically, uh, Lady Marguerite is laying on top of him, but I'm just going to move her f- right there for now. Okay. And Amelia is right there. Amelia is like uh, uh, Lady Marguerite's uh, lady in waiting or handmaiden. Got it. Great. Yeah. I'm going to take uh, m- uh, my lay on hands and just immediately use that on the mayor. Sure. 
That's a great idea. Uh, if you want so, him to live, sure. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I feel like I do. So he's, uh, he's he is a good guy. The mayor, Mayor Philip II, just to give you a little bit of backstory. Yeah, I mean, I Otten would know. So I guess yeah, you tell me he's a bit. he's literally the heart of Claire de Lune. Hmm. Like when you come to Claire de Lune, he's the mascot. He's the guy that greets you. He's the guy that encourages you right. to see the sights of the city. He's been the mayor for a while, and people love him. Like he's. If, if Charisma could go beyond 20, his would be a 22. Like he's just that kind of a guy. I and he's that. also he's also a little unhealthy. He likes his sweets and he likes his wine. So he's he's a little, uh, he's a big guy, um, healthy guy. Um, but yeah, that's that's right. uh, Lord Phil. Uh, or Mayor Mr. Phil. Mayor, I will not let you die like this. Uh, my father would, but I will not. And uh, <laughs> I put my hands on his two little cheeks. Uh-huh. I just like squeeze them okay. over and over again, <laughs> and I will use. <laughs> like, come on, come back to life. Come, Mr. Mayor, speak to me. Hello, <laughs> hello, it's me, Otten. Mayor, you remember me? I invite you to my house. You come over for breakfast sometimes on Sundays. He he seems uh, to be slowly coming to, but as he's coming to, you notice that he's coughing up a little bit of blood at the same time. Oh, please do not get that on me. I do not know if it is infectious. <laughs> uh, Okay, so I'll use uh, t- uh, yeah. How much are you healing? Him? Ten points. Okay, great. Uh, healing. Yeah, he's looking. He's looking pretty good. And I'll uh, use my little scarf to like wipe the blood. Oh, you've got a little something on your face. It is blood, but do not worry. We'll get it off. Think of it like a, you know, like a food on your mouth. You like Leave that? Leave him be. Like this? this is uh, Lady Marguerite, I and she happy. slaps. She slaps your hand away. Ouch. It's not an attack. It's just her. That hurt. hurt me. Why would you do that? I don't know what you're doing. I am helping him. All right. I wipe we're the blood we're moving on to the next round. <laughs> 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 Unless you wanted to do oh, something please. else besides. No, no, no. That's what that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Okay. I'm just telling uh, you how I was doing it. So. You very much successfully heal him, and he looks a million times better. Um. Okay, uh, up next, uh, we're going to do something that I'm adding on to this combat because I had extra time to prepare. Uh, it's a lair action where Aww. the crowds that have developed, uh, you know how much you love Jeff's lair action, so I figured I'd throw a lair action in here. Uh, you know how much the crowds uh, have gathered and how they're drunk and how they're panicking. I need everyone to make dexterity saving throws as the crowds literally flood parts of this battle and they're bumping into you and you're trying to keep yourself uh well, steady you make your deck save. uh and... that is a 21. Okay. okay 17 for kaylee okay 23 for cc well, you guys are all some dexterous <laughs> yeah punks Ooh, i did okay i'm seeing jessica's face <laughs> uh 12 not not terrible okay uh, it is not terrible. So all 18. that means, yeah, you're fine. Uh, the rest of you are fine. All that means is instead of getting knocked down, you were bumped into. So on your next uh, um, turn, you're gonna have a negative one to oh. any any roll that you make that would require you physically doing anything because you essentially got knocked to the uh. side. I am yeah. here, do not trample me. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm small, please. You are very small, and there are several people that uh, what were you going? try to trample you, and they oh, just Lord. run by you instead and bump you off to the side. Okay, so that was a layer action. Not nearly as exciting as I thought it was going to be. Uh, <laughs> but we're back up to Everybody the top. Saved. Yeah, we're back up to the top with uh, Miss Layla, Layla Mittens. What would you like to do? Uh, so I'm going to bonus action disengage. <clears throat> cool. Is the first thing I'm gonna do. Where would you like uh, to go? Um, I would. Let me just check the map. I want to move like here. Yeah. Actually, a little further. What is that? Is that twenty feet there? N- each square is only five feet. So... I thought so I'm ten feet away. I'm happy yeah. to be ten feet away. That's fine. Okay. Um, and then I am fighting with daggers currently, as far as I recall. Yeah. Yep. You're definitely a dagger thrower, dagger catcher, dagger juggler. Awesome. But I think I have a short bow. What would it cost me to change weapons in this moment? You can you can change as a free action. 
Great, as a free action, I would like to change to my short bow and I would like to fire at the creepy weird kid in front of me. <laughs> okay, okay. Just yeah. so you know, uh, even though the, the, the crowd is kind of panning going over the place, it will appear because no one saw her try to stab you. It will appear as if you are shooting a little girl with a bow. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my reaction and say, uh, can I use my reaction to say something? Uh, please, yeah. You don't even have to uh, use your reaction. You can just say something. Okay, great. I will say uh, the little weird one and and the Ponzi rich lady. They're all a part of it. Subterfuge, attack them. <laughs> and then I am going to put an arrow in a small child's face. Okay. <laughs> a child okay. looking person's face. Not a child. Okay. I love children. I, I, love children. I, I <laughs> big fan of children. This uh, isn't a, just... this isn't a real child, so you're fine. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, <laughs> uh, 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 I would love for you to roll you. your attack, but I would great. also love for you to roll persuasion because you're going to try to persuade some of the crowd and the fact oh. that there are bodyguards that are just kind of standing by at this point. Okay, cool. Let's um, see what happens. That may or may not enter the combat. Twenty, so twenty-five. Whoa. On your persuasion or your attack? On my persuasion. Okay, so. People, people believe you for the most part. They believe that yeah. something, something foul is going on at the very least. Cool. Awesome. Uh, now you can go ahead and roll your attack on the little girl. Sweet. I hope I get a decent attack roll because I got a nut. Uh, what is that? Oh, that's a fourteen plus seven, so that's a twenty-one. That'll hit. Awesome. And do your damage. One d six plus five. That is a six plus five. Eleven points of damage at the little girl. Oh. Oof. Oh, the points of face damage. <laughs> yeah. Oof. I am. Yeah. I, like, so this I'm, little I'm girl takes an arrow right to the chest. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and Which she squeals she? in pain. And what's up? Which token is she? She's the one with the hat. She's the one with the hat. The cute oh, no. little beret. <laughs> in fact, in fact, uh, hold on. Let me roll for that. She roll. said yeah. she transforms oh. into something else now. Please. Uh, oh jeez. No. Oh, no, she had a poison blade. I, she, she had a poison she made, blade. She made her roll, so she's still a little girl. Yeah, so you just shot a little girl in the chest point blank with your bow. <laughs> Don't feel bad. Whatever you just did, trust me, that is not what it seems. <laughs> that is a Subterfuge. demon in disguise. Subterfuge. Wow. I don't okay. know. Like, I saw this little girl with the, the poison. I so the way I'm going to kind of even this out, because she yeah. still looks like a little girl, is mm -hmm. that everyone is just kind of stunned and panicked at that at this point. So people mm -hmm. see you do this, but mm -hmm. they don't understand what's going mm -hmm. on, and they haven't okay. quite registered yet what's happening. So okay. the bodyguards and, and the crowd are just sort of taking this in along with the fact that there's musketeers that are literally shooting the mayor and they're here to protect people, not kill people. So, okay. it, um, so it's chaos. It's chaos. Yeah. yeah. But you did just shoot a little girl in the chest. Uh, just, I'm just saying. Look. I'm just saying. <laughs> look. Yes. All I can remember from last session is that somebody put a blade at my face and there was poison on it. So just <laughs> bonus action, disengage, fire at the thing. That's I, what, that I, was my plan. I, <laughs> hey, I I agree. I agree. You got to do what you got to do. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, it is Hotspur's turn and he Ooh, is this. angry. Oh, yeah, yeah. He sees the fact that you just hired the mayor. Or hired. You just healed the mayor. <laughs> I also and, could hire him. Yeah. And he is going to, uh, he is also going to bonus action disengage, step to the side, and he's going to flip his rapier upside down and his main gouge, and he's just going to drive them both into the mayor or attempt oh. to. What? Um, yeah, he Isn't wants to. Isn't that lady on top of him still? She is. Uh, and you can roll a perception check to see what happens. Okay. Which lady's on top of him? Uh, Marguerite. Lady Marguerite. Oh, but her daughter's being creepy. It, yeah, it's not really her daughter. It's oh, just yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. a cousin that fo follows her around. Uh, What'd you get for your perception? Uh, not, it is a three. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh. Well, you just see him flip his weapons upside down and drive them down into the mare, who is prone. So he's gonna, he's gonna do his attack. He wants this guy dead. Uh, yeah, that's gonna hit. Can I use a reaction in this moment? Uh, didn't you already use your reaction? 
Or no, you've had a turn since then, so you have your reaction back. Yeah, you yeah. can. For so sure. So I can, like... Don't you have something where you can, like... Yeah, I can use protection. So while wielding a shield, which I have, uh-huh. a creature you can see attacks a target other than you within five feet of you can use your reaction to impose disadvantage on the attack roll. So okay, I will roll again. You get disadvantage. I know what I rolled on the first one, so we'll see if this is lower. It is lower, but... Is it enough to hit him? Oh, I should have used a different one. It's okay. There'll be more. There'll be more attacks. <laughs> Do it up. <laughs> I can just hear Otten saying this to himself. Oh, it's okay. Uh, there'll be more. There'll be more. Otten, there'll be more. There'll be more. It's okay. Don't be so hard on yourself. Better you know, next time. Team yourself. It's important <laughs> to have a positive internal monologue. Otten. So because <laughs> of your because of your shield, so you literally this is what happens. You 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 hold your arm out with your shield on it because you're already right there pinching his cheeks. And the rapier is going to impale, if not run through the mare, and your shield is the only thing that stops it from that happening. Yes. And it ricochets off the shield and he drives oh, the rapier yes. into the ground and he turns and hisses at you. Ooh. <laughs> uh, that cool is his sound you made. That is his action and his bonus action. So all he's got left is his reaction and he's gonna save that. Uh, so good job, Yay, good job, Mr. Paladin. I used a reaction. Uh, yeah, you just saved the mayor's life again. Uh, so we are at Kaylee. Kaylee, what would you like to do? Oh man, Hotspur's going down. <laughs> yeah, I saw right. that coming. <laughs> saw yeah, that coming. so I'm I am rapier route and just running straight through to Shish yeah. Kebab and right okay. through the center. So your rapier, your your rapier is broken. So are you using the broken rapier as a as a dagger? Or do you want to okay. use a dagger or all right, let's see. So my broken rapier does a little less damage, right? Isn't that what we decided? Yes, it does a D4. It does the same damage as a dagger. So really it's oh. just it's just storytelling so, at this point. Okay. Let's <laughs> say then that I sheathed my broken rapier okay. and whipped out two daggers cool. and I'm going on in with two daggers. I love it. Cause do I got it. that two weapon fight in, y'all. You do, you do. Your second attack will not, if it lands, does not get your, um, uh, does not get your, your attribute modifier. bonus. Yeah. Okay, great, got it. For damage. Okay. You still get it to attack, but not for damage. Okay, great. So here's my two attacks coming right up. Cool. This is exciting. This could Come be the end of Hotspur. Uh, so that's a 22 and a 15. Uh, those both hit. Yikes. Heck. So that yes, baby. That, is, that okay. is not good for uh, Mr. Hotspur. Uh, okay, so the first attack is a total of 12 damage between the sneak <gasps> attack and the piercing. Okay, and your second attack? <laughs> and the second attack, oh man, it says a total of 17 damage because the sneak attack's a 12. Uh, but I don't Wait, know if that just, added the modifier. Just, yeah, no, no, no. Yeah, that, that added the modifier. It should just be a D4. It should okay, just be so a flat that would be D4. the piercing damage is just the D4, but yes. then no sneak attack? Correct. Okay, let me just roll a straight D4 then yeah. off D&D Beyond. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, so that is three more damage. So three and three, so 12 total? Uh, so 15 total. 15 total. Oof. Okay. So... And as I do it, like, as I run (laughs) through him, I just want to say, you're pathetic. (laughs) Ooh, spicy, I like it. Okay, so this is what happens. You slide in, you you sheathe the rapier, which takes you uh, a millisecond. You draw the two daggers, you drive both of them into his stomach as far and as deep as you possibly can. You whisper this in his ear, and he just leans over and his hat falls off of his head, revealing that he's got uh, two very tiny little blue horns. Um, and he he looks back at you. I hate you so much. <laughs> and then he, he keels over and passes out. Technically not dead, but very, very close. Huh. If, there's, if there's time, I would also like to take his hat off and place it on my own head. Ooh, oh, I like that. I tell you what, yes. if you're willing, if you're 
Did you use your bonus action? Yeah, you did, because you did your attack. If you're willing to sacrifice your reaction for this round, then I'll let you take his hat. Yeah, I'm gonna do it. It's for flair. Okay. Yeah, okay. do it. Do it. Yeah. Sure. So <laughs> so as he's keeling over, I hate you so much. You, The hat's <laughs> falling off the front of his head, revealing his two little horns, and you just, uh, are you gonna let go of one of the daggers? I'm gonna say you let go of one of the daggers so it's still in his belly, and then you your hand snaps out, you grab onto the hat, and you twirl it back up and place it on top of your head and do a little flourish. Uh, if the crowd saw that, which there's maybe one or two people passing by, they would be very impressed, but there's a little too much going on right now. That's cool. <laughs> I know it happened, and yes. that's what matters. Ot Otten sees it. Otten can react, however. <laughs> It's impressive. Uh, so yeah, he's on the ground and uh, bleeding out. Good job. Uh, LOD, it is your turn, my dear. Okay, how bad? How badly hurt does the little girl look? Uh, she's pretty messed up. Um, I mean, she doesn't look like she's gonna die immediately, but she's got a big arrow sticking out of her chest. Okay. So LED is gonna run up 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, <laughs> and uh, say, you pick on someone your own size. And she's gonna cast Mab's Grasp, which is Arms of Hadar. Oh, wow. Wait, and, doesn't that affect a big area though? Uh, 10 feet out. So I'm, I'm gonna get, oh shoot. Is it yeah. 10 feet from all around me? Yeah, you might hit some oh, some random. Choose? You might hit what? some random people. Let's see. In here. fact, you'll hit a lot of random people. Okay, yeah. Batter all creatures within 10 feet of me. Yeah, I'm not going to run up into the middle of two yeah. and do that. That would, <laughs> that, would, that would probably kill the mayor. <laughs> no! And then people would start to wonder about you a little bit. Yeah, that would be no bueno. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just do it. Just go with a classic Eldritch Blast into this chick. Um, okay, so you run up, say, try on somebody your own size, and blast her in, yeah. in the face with an Eldritch Blast. Okay, cool. Yeah. Go for it. Only one beam at this level. Weak, weak sauce. But I rolled very well. Uh, seventeen plus seven to hit. Ooh. Yeah, that that definitely hits. And. <laughs> Dang. Let's roll my d10, if I can find it. Where is it? D10, come here. That's nine force damage, nice. Okay. The dice uh, really wanted me to hit this little girl. Yeah, Um. so here's what happens. <laughs> you walk, you float, walk, whatever, right up to her. Don't forget you can fly, by the way. And you, I think we lost Dunati, but she's coming back. Um. You extend your hand, you call upon the forces of your uh, dark patron and blast this little girl right in the face with an Eldritch Blast. And as you do that, the the Raspberry Beret that's sitting on top of her head gets blown off and she immediately starts to transform <gasps> into this very gnarled, knobby, covered in uh, various sores and warts gnome who's dressed in pretty nice clothes. He's got like a nice jacket on and uh, trousers and little boots uh, that come to points, but he is ugly. Like he's n just gnarled and twisted. Um, mm -hmm. And you nail him right in the face. So now, you know, a couple of the pimples on his face burst open as you blast him with this Elders Blast. Now there's like ooze and, oh. and pus leaking down the side of his face at the same oh, time. No. And uh, he looks back at you and growls, and you notice that he's missing several teeth. Ah, I'll kill you. Mm, you can try. Disgusting. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and Fitz, go ahead and give me a perception check. Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. Pleasure. I think I would be, I'm, I'm really not trying to metagame. I think I would have to be back because I can't cast a melee attack with Eldritch Blast. Uh, That's fine. You can back up right five there. feet. Yeah. That is a 17 for me. Yeah, you, even with the pure chaos that's happening in this battle, and there's a lot of chaos happening right now, and you're kind of focused on the musketeers, when you hear that voice, mm -hmm. you recognize it immediately. This is the man that tricked 
all of you, all mm -hmm. four of you, into going out to that well mm -hmm. and um, looking over into the well because he promised you that there was magic inside of it and then pushed each one of you into it. Mm -hmm. Hence, creating your very being. Yeah, um, I think uh, uh, just, for, just for flavor, the um, uh, you see like, like another head like in the direction of where the that sound like that voice comes from comes yeah. out the side of my head and it's like this older kind of slightly more round faced guy with a big beard just like let me at him Whoa! and then it goes back in and sees just like okay just give it a second we've got other things to do <laughs> as as if the crowd around that area didn't have enough to panic about <laughs> yeah. The couple of them see you do that, and they <laughs> literally stop in their tracks and spin around and start running the opposite direction. Just fully take off. Yeah, they just are like, no, I don't want anything to do with the two-faced man. That's Thank fair. you, no. That's definitely yeah. fair. <laughs> so he has been revealed, uh, the arch nemesis of Fitz, also no known as Fadimir von Rumenklaus. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, okay, so cool. Uh, anything else, Elodie? Nope, just um, just looking a, a, a bit, covering up my my terrified face. Okay, so uh, cool. So uh, now, the fact that uh, she got shot in the chest and blasted in the face doesn't matter so much because this little girl has been transformed into a creepy gnome. Um, uh. Uh, I think we have the naughty back. There we are. Yay! Yay. Uh, okay. Up next is CC. Perfect timing. Hey. Okay, interesting. Um, the Musketeers haven't gone yet. They haven't gone yet. Okay, yeah. fine. So I can kind of, I'll hold off uh, on that then, in which case, and I will. You're pretty sure that your suggestion spell worked on them, though. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, cool. Perfect. I know that. So I can, I'm going to, yeah, I will, in fact... <laughs> oh no, that's a concentration. <laughs> I can't do that. Uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. That's what's fine. I, in which case, I'm going to look down. Uh, you see um, that uh, uh, that Cece's eyes, um, well, Fitz's eyes, sort of glow a little red as mm -hmm. I look through the crowd. I kind of cut through uh, the crowd, look dead uh, at this uh, at my nemesis that has just um, uh, appeared. Uh, and um, I kind of put my hands on the that big ruby um, uh, necklace that I have, uh, amulet, uh, and I'm going to need them to roll me a wisdom saving throw. Okay, who who are you doing this to? Uh, I'm going to do this to uh, my um, uh, to. Oh, hold on, actually, I might need to move. Because you got to target one person with it. Two, three, four. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I can I can do this. Um, on um, my arch nemesis, apologies. Oh, okay. So are you gonna go over to him to get his attention or how, how are you getting his attention? Because right uh, now he's focused on the people that are trying to kill him. It's uh Oh, no, no, sorry, apologies. I'm not actually using the ruby. I was just using that for flavor. Apologies, I'm oh, casting a okay. spell. <laughs> Got it. Got it. Um, uh, <laughs> yes, I can. Da -da -da. Uh... Yes. Okay. But yes, yeah, so I uh, I reach out uh, towards uh, the, uh, to, towards him and and, uh, and I start uh, kind of uttering some uh, arcane words. Uh, and yeah, I need a wisdom save for okay. him, please. Okay. Wisdom save. Uh, he does have advantages on wisdom saves against magic because he is a gnome. Uh, of course. Oh man painfully bad that's a yes. that's a seven yes okay Excellent. so what do you what what's happening to to mr uh Fatimir? uh amazing so i'm casting uh dissonant whispers um Ooh. Uh, and, Ooh. Uh, Ooh. so i i yeah i start speaking you hear um if you were close enough to hear basically cc is whispering like all of the bad things that have happened to cc since that day um sure. that they they think is entire like he is entirely responsible for um as he takes 10 10 points of damage and um Oof. he must use uh his next turn to move uh yeah and mu or must immediately use his reaction if available to move as far away from me as possible 
um, yeah, basically using his reaction. So okay, he loses well, any reaction that he has and then moves sure. as far away from it as possible. His reaction is going to be, <laughs> he grabs at his hair and pulls what hair he has left out of his head, and then he collapses on the ground. That's his oh, reaction. Oh, wow. wow. Okay, nice. Nice. Yeah, he's a spellcaster, so they're not known for being particularly tough, and he's been shot in the chest, blasted in the face, and now his mind has been melted. In, in which case, oh, no. in which case out of the, out of the, the other side, if out of the other side, you see this uh, a dark-skinned woman uh, start to appear out of the side of uh, yeah. Cece's face. She goes, you were not supposed to kill him! Ah, we need him alive! He's, <laughs> he's gets... not dead, he's unconscious, but yes. <laughs> I know. I've yeah. just asked the DM, and apparently he's still alive. Just unconscious. <laughs> Will you go back in? <laughs> Can you just push her back in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just push her face back in and melts back into the side of the face. Get back in. Get out. Get in. <laughs> See another arm reaching for a sword? No, stop it. <laughs> Fine. Fine. We've talked about this. Yeah. Not so, uh, can you action. see the little the little skull and crossbones on Lady Viola that I just put Aww. on there? Yeah. Okay, good. Uh -huh. That just means that they're in death saves, and I want to make sure that I mark that so I don't forget. Okay. 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 Cool. Uh, cool. Uh, anything else? Uh, nope. Okay. Uh, wow, you guys are crushing these guys. Oh, um, actually, can I actually? Uh, yeah. Actually very quick. It, uh, underneath the uh, musketeers. Mm -hmm. uh, is that like a walkway under there? Yes. So where the great question. So where you see on the map uh, those openings leading down into the southern part of the the market or the square, those yeah. are openings. Cool. Where you see the walkway next to buildings, mm -hmm. that's where there's actual stone buttresses that hold up the walkway. Perfect. Think like in Rome where you'll see those archways that are leading, you know, aqueducts or whatever, but this is like obviously a, a walkway. Yeah, that's a great question. Those are those are open and you can pass through those. In which case, I would like to, I'll just position myself here, but if I can be underneath them, yeah. because uh, then if the muskets get thrown down, I want to be ready to kind of pounce sure. on them. Basically. Sure, you're, okay. you're kind of hanging out underneath, so looking like up underneath to see what happens. Down there, but I'll just put myself yeah. there so I'm not blocking Yeah, yeah, them. for sure. Okay, cool. Awesome. Love it. Okay. Uh, it's the mule's turn. Uh, the mule kicks. Uh, the mayor, uh, who has seen your guys' bravery, is the king. Is, hit? Um, yeah. no, <laughs> I'm generally concerned about this mule. Jared's mentioned it like a lot. Yeah, like I feel <laughs> like, really like it's like, important yeah, that we follow up. The mule is the key, yeah. everyone. <laughs> the mule was the gem all along. No, um, uh, so the mayor is actually going to try to do something very brave, being instilled by the courage of Otten and uh, um, uh, Kaylee. He's actually going to try to push Lady Marguerite off of him and get up. So he's going to do a grapple check. Hmm. Let's see how that goes. Lady Marguerite's not that strong, so what happens? Oh, wow, these dice are terrible. Um, okay. Well, I'm rolling bad on both sides, so... Uh, oh, okay. Okay. No! Uh, yeah, it's a good thing I'm not doing death saves for uh, anybody, because they'd be dead. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, so this is what happens. He stands up but as he stands up he still has lady marguerite hanging on him so he's able to get to his feet we'll say but he's not able to like move or leave the area because she's you know hanging on to his shoulder and has her arm wrapped around him mm -hmm. um so they're kind of locked uh but he's no longer prone and he's no longer laying on the ground and he's huffing and puffing and his face is turning red let me up and that's his turn um it is now lady marguerite's turn she turns to emilia she sees the swashbuckler uh, uh the blue devil go down she sees lady viola who's now a creepy disturbed gnome go down so she turns to emilia and she says emilia do it and emilia starts gesturing with her hands and she stomps on the ground and the entire area goes black. Oh boy. 
Okay. So the moral of this whole thing is like, don't Did trust we just cross children. Off yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that's what it is, and I'm yeah. cool with that. Mm -hmm. That's why I shot. Okay. Dumb, so yeah. I'm just kidding. I love kids. I want to reiterate. I, I, I love I kids. Really love kids. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you guys: Can you guys still move your tokens now that that's in the way, or is that going to screw it up? Oh. Yes, we can. I think. Yeah. Yes, we can. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, love yeah. it. Yeah. Way to go, Roll20. Uh, okay, uh, so this, uh, when she stomps her feet after uh, gesturing, you notice uh, not fog and not pure uh, shadow, so not the darkness spell, uh -huh. but something sure. very different, something very uh, unfamiliar to you spellcasters, which I think there's only one spellcaster, so mm -hmm. no, two. Uh, uh, smoke black smoke billows out from underneath her feet. Mm -hmm. This black smoke immediately fills the the area, mm -hmm. uh, causing your eyes to burn, much like mm -hmm. smoke would, and for you to cough and uh, have a hard time breathing. It also creates um, quite a bit of obstruction, so it's hard to see. You can barely see, I'm gonna say, two, three feet in front of your face. That's how far you can see before the black smoke uh, covers you. Okay. So uh, that's Amelia. Um, then something in the darkness happens and the only people that have a snowball's chance in hell of seeing it would be Otten. So Otten, you can give me a uh, observation check at disadvantage because of the smoke. Yeah, you're muted, Katie. I'm just it's... mumbling to myself. You didn't miss anything. It was just me going, okay. Oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, wait, which check? Perception. No. Seven? Okay. No. Uh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're kind of locked into what's going on. I hate the smoke in my eyes. This is one of yeah. my least favorite feelings. Yeah, I mean, the smoke really does shoot right up into your face. Oh, it's like getting hit right in the face there. with, yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so you hear you hear uh, a gurgling sound, yes. You have a question, Unadi? Yeah, I do. Um, <laughs> tell me if this is nonsensicalities or not. It, yeah. But I'm a knife thrower. Right. And I was looking at the lay of the land a little bit before the smoke went up. Yeah. So I'm willing to take a gamble uh -huh. that Otten hasn't moved, hopefully. Right. And the last shot that I throw, if I was planning on going for Marguerite right. in the first place, right. I would like to make a gamble uh -huh. and hurl my dagger through the smoke. <laughs> on, on your turn, on your turn. Oh, oh, okay, on my turn. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, Amelia's still going. Oh, I'm uh, okay, okay, cool. So, <laughs> no, I, I feel you, I feel you. <laughs> Uh, okay, so smoke, poof, right in Otten's face. You start mm -hmm. coughing and gagging. All mm -hmm. you hear mm -hmm. is the sounds of bone popping <gasps> and what what can only be described as skin tearing. <gasps> oh. And then there's a horrible gurgling sound and that's what you hear. <laughs> I do not like this. Uh, and that's like Lady this. Marguerite's turn. Uh, and now we are to the Musketeers. Okay. Cool. Come so, on, my musketeer. Uh, <sighs> so Musketeer 1 mm -hmm. immediately throws his musket down. Uh, give me... No, you know what? I'll just roll to see what happens. <laughs> that sounds um, like the beginning of like a joke. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he throws his musket and it, he does not throw it off of the banister. Um, uh, Fitz, he just throws it on the ground. I think I did specify in suggestion. Oh, did you? Throw it down. Okay. Like, I did I, off off of the the walkway. Well, maybe he wasn't paying that close attention. No, I'm kidding. Uh, <laughs> so so he takes his musket and he hurls it off of the uh, the walkway. Then, because he only has one attack, he's going to turn and try to grapple Musketeer number two, and he's going to try to throw musketeer number two and the musket off of 
the yes. walkway. Do it. So that's going to be a grapple check. Let me look up their stats real quick to see. Musketeers. Dead tie. Okay. Uh, so you know that moment in movies where someone's holding a gun and someone else grabs the gun and they're like wrestling back and forth mm. over the gun and they're just kind of locked in the middle of it. And they usually have like a really cool scene, like a, a, like lots of, you know, banter and dialogue back and forth. That's what's happening between the two musketeers right now. <laughs> <laughs> Only it's all in French, so you don't understand any of it. So this is just like, okay, um, this looks awesome, but can you hurry up, please? Yes. Musketeer number three, however, mm -hmm. does reload his musket. No. And he is under very specific orders to kill a certain someone. He knows where he's at, although he cannot see him at this point. So he is going to fire blindly into oh, the cloud no. of smoke. He's going to be at disadvantage to shoot the mayor. Oh, Snapdragon. Agreed. He rolled a one. Yeah. So there's a little thing that you may or may not know about muskets. Uh -huh. They have, they they have they... a misfire chance. Yeah. Yes. So because he rolled a one, his musket blows up in his face. Uh, the powder erupts. He screams as shards of metal go up into his cheek and he it's drops like his funny. weapon. Uh, funny side note is I actually ran this as a tester with my friends and one of them played a musket wielding guy and his gun also blew up in his face. So special shout out to Dave. Dave, when you watch this, it happens to the, the bad guys as well. Aww. Okay. Um, all right. So that's the musketeer's turn. That did not go well for them. Lady oh, musketeering is a rough life. Yeah. Especially when you got wizards manipulating your mind. Yeah. Um, Lady Viola is going to roll to see if she mm. bleeds out. She does not. So the little uh, the little gnome stabilizes. Not that yeah. any of you see that, nor do you care. Uh, and Dogberry, who is Look still scared? And there's the a big cloud stabilizes. of darkness. Um, but he no longer sees the object of his fear. So I'm going to say he is going to go in and grab his friend and give him a healing potion to try to revive him. I gotta move that for a second. So he's gonna drag his friend a ways away and give him a potion. And what's that that little icon where it looks like someone's got their hands on their head? What is that? Uh, that's the frightened icon. Because he's still frightened of LOD. I don't think that goes away for a while, oh, right, LOD? That lasts for like a minute or something crazy. I forgot what caused that frightenedness. Yeah, your Fey presence. Ah, yeah, yeah I can look into that. Uh, Fey yeah. presence <laughs> uh, until the end of my next turn. Okay. So he's oh. probably not fight frightened. Oh anymore. yeah, he's not frightened at all. Okay, good to know. Uh, well, then he's definitely going to uh, grab his friend and heal him, uh, which he does. Very boo. What are you talking about? You guys have been mowing through my bad guys like nobody's business. Because there's 800 of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, did you, did you, have you seen this map? Yes. Littered. Yeah. Yeah, there's bad, a lot of guys. Bad boys. There's, there's chaos. It's chaos. Okay. Um, all right. So he does that. Heals him up. Let's roll some healing real quick. Okay. Good to know. Um, so he's back in the game. All right, uh, Otten, it is your turn. You have no idea what's going on other than the fact that there's smoke sprayed in your face and you're coughing and gagging and um, having a hard time seeing anything Okay. So other than what's immediately in front of you. I'm still touching the mayor, right? He's right in front of me. Uh, I don't know. I was Would you holding still... his... Uh, he stood up, though. Would you have stopped him from standing up? I guess I, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. You you at least know where he is, right. like, in generalities. He's he's very close by. What I would like to do is grab the mayor okay. and try to get out of the smoke. Great. He is so, currently grabbed already, so you will have to do a contest of I strength. Can I do, like, a this kind of fight thing with her? <laughs> Yes, okay. uh, totally. 
So you're gonna give me the mayor. He is my friend first. A contest of strength <laughs> with uh, with whoever or whatever is holding. Great. Okay. 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 We're doing pretty good. I'm sorry. You can use uh, um, athletics on grapple check. So you can use your athletics if that's better. Same. Eighteen. Uh, you beat me. So. One thing that you notice as you grab him and pull him from the clutches of this creature is that there is a large, uh, much like a snake, coiled around him, and it was squeezing him to death, like a constrictor (gasps) snake, only it's brightly colored for some reason. Um, And when you pull him free, the snake unwinds from his neck and part of his shoulder and slithers away as you pull him out of that. But the the gurgling sound was the mayor being choked to death by this snake. What is happening? It's okay, it's okay, Okay. Jasper, it's okay, it's okay. okay. I got you, Jasper, it's okay. What is (laughs) this on me? Chaos that you created. (laughs) Okay, so I wanna get- I'm just using what they gave me in in the D&D books. Far away from whatever that monstrosity was. Yeah, so, so the other so, direction. He sees yeah, immediately, so he doesn't even know this. You want to pull him away? Run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to I want to try and get out of the smoke and away from the people that were attacking him even though like Kaylee has obviously taken care of the the blue devil but right. like Go ahead and move wherever you want to move and okay. uh, cuz there's nobody that gets attacks of opportunity on you. Uh, Amelia is not going to try to attack you. Right. Also they probably can't. So Trying to kind of come back from once we came over here. Okay. Uh, so just move your 30 feet, whatever that is, because that's how far you can uh, drag him, essentially. Uh, oh, no, you have mobility. You can go 40 feet. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I'll go to this and you're final stool. Okay, so you're you're going to take him way over there. All right. Yeah. Boo, 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 boo. Okay, cool, sweet. Okay, cool, sweet. Okay. Let's <laughs> So he is badly (laughs) wounded and you notice that he has a bite in his neck where the constrictor snake bit him and it is two puncture wounds that are exactly like Fitz's story. Exactly. Oh no. Uh Uh-oh. He's still alive, but he got bit and this brightly colored constrictor snake just let go of him as you pulled him out, uh, out of the smoke. Alton, you heard this part of the story, but you don't remember what happened. Oh, Alton, you need to remember on your comprehension skills. This is something that your staff has talked to you about. You need to be a better listener. I am sorry, Mr. Mayor. We will get to the bottom of this. I will find the uh, uh, Fitz. Fitz. Uh, I'll just start. Someone calling me. <laughs> okay. So. Me, <laughs> Alton. So to add more chaos to the chaos, we're back to our, is that it, Otten? Did you have anything Well, else? I feel like that counts as my action, probably yeah. ripping him yeah. free, so yeah. yeah. the grapple yeah. check for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, so as if we need more chaos, uh, we're back to the layer action. Um, this time, uh, the crowd uh, turns a little bit and they notice when you pull the mayor out that he's been badly wounded, but is still alive. Mm -hmm. And people, because it's a panic situation, they don't know whose side who is on. And so the layer action is going to be that you are going to be grappled, Otten, by several people that are just trying to pull you away from the mayor. Does that make sense? The mob is essentially going to grab you and try to remove you from the situation. Can I use my reaction to say I am helping? Yes. Okay. And I will give you, and I will, I love that. I will give you a, a persuasion check to convince them before they try to grab you and pull you off. No, I know how this looks, but I did not bite him. My teeth do not match up. If I do this uh, on his neck, it's not my teeth. It's a different Save the a mayor! Different oh, jeez. Oh. Really rolling aggressively today. <laughs> uh, ooh, 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 what did you say? Um, persuasion. Persuasion? Yeah. Because okay. you're not lying, uh, so it's not deception. 18. Okay. You convince the majority of the mob, um, but there are, I'm going to say, there's one guy 
who doesn't believe you, and he's just going to reach in and try to grapple you. So it's give me a grapple check. Guy who wants to. Uh, he wants to be a hero. Yes, I understand, and honestly, good for you. I'm proud of you. Uh, nine. I got a sixteen. Uh, Add your athletics. I uh, got uh, still less than you at the thirteen. Okay, so then you're grappled. So you grab onto the mayor. This guy grabs onto you. Oh, it's, it's like a chain of grapples. Yes, panic, okay. pandemonium. In fact, I'm gonna say this drunken elf right here is the guy that steps in and tries to grab onto you and save the mayor. Do I will him? save the mayor. Do I and know he him? Just <laughs> holds on. Uh, give me, yeah, maybe. Give me a history check. Oh, uh, ooh, history. Nope. Uh, thirteen. Uh, yeah, he's pretty well known. This is Oberon. He's just the town drunk. Oh. He's a good-looking elf, but he had some bad, uh, some some love uh, go oh. south on him. Uh, Oberon, classic and so story. He's, he's just he's just turned into a drunk at this point. Oh, yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. So he wants to be a hero. He wants to be just like you. When so he, he's going to try to save the mayor. When he grapples me, yeah. I just gonna kind of give him like a little bit of a loving embrace. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You've had a rough go of it, Oberon. I have. Okay. My I life has been terrible. I know, Oberon. It's okay. I will. No, I will be happy understand. to make it look like you save him. This is fine. You can have this one. Really? <laughs> yeah, but you have to. I am not. Okay. We All talk right. about this later. All right. So we're back up at the top, <laughs> Layla. Wait. Did okay. we skip? Did we skip me? I have only gone once. Might have actually. I've only done oh. one turn. Did I not? Yeah, no, you went. I know you've only had one we, turn. I think we've all only had one turn. Yeah, because we started uh, halfway, well, three quarters of the way in the oh, initiative order. Oh, got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Did you skip me? No, it's a valid question. <laughs> Later went twice. <laughs> That's just so sad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good question. Uh, Layla, what would you like to do? Okay, I'm just going to look at the map again. One sec. All right, so you just yeah. see cloud, cloud of smoke in your face. You're coughing. You're gagging. It's black. It's, it's horrible. It's like smoke. Want, okay, still want to take my attack. Okay. And what? go for the same nonsensicalities and throw two daggers into space, where I okay. think that Viola was and where I think that um, Marguerite was. Okay. Well, Viola turned into a creepy little gnome, and you might have oh, yeah. been off the uh, thing. Yeah. But... I think things happened in the internet yeah. either. Yeah. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, uh, whether, wherever the gnome, I think okay. it might be, um, okay. wherever Marguerite is. Great. Am I doing that at disadvantage because I'm... You're definitely a disadvantage. Uh, disadvantage. you're, you're thrown uh, into the dark for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm going to use my lucky feet because I got three lucky points. <laughs> so I'm going right. to spend a lucky point. Uh, well, you can do it. And... Uh, I think you can do it after you've rolled just before yeah. you know the outcome. So True. roll, okay, cool. you might roll well. And then, and then not need it, yeah? Then right. not need it, yeah. Yep. Okay, cool, cool. So that's plus seven to hit. Let's see what happens. Uh, that, I need his lucky feet. So I'm going to do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately. Oh, that's way better. That is a 26 to hit. With disadvantage? Uh, with disadvantage. Wow. Uh, All right. With disadvantage, this... that is a 23 to hit. I'm sorry. Okay. So you're throwing the first one at the gnome? <laughs> Yeah, the person's going at the gnome. Okay. So the gnome, who was in death saving throws, is now quite dead. <laughs> yes. So the gnome, uh, yeah, the gnome um, gurgled uh, after being shot, blasted, and then uh, had his mind melted, passes out on the ground, uh -huh. and Layla just whips a dagger into his back, oh. and he lets out a final, ah, and dies. Awesome. I've got two weapon fighting here, so I want to throw my other dagger just where Marguerite might have been. Correct. Go ahead. Right. Okay, cool. I've got two D20 pounds. Simpler. Uh, at disadvantage, that is an 18 plus 7, so that's 25. Wow. All right. Yeah, I rolled it. Yeah, I rolled roll it. your damage. <laughs> <laughs> Another dagger. My dagger's what? Uh, 1D, what? No, it's 1D. just a D4. Because it's your second attack, so it's just a yeah, D4. Yeah, you yeah. don't get you don't get your attribute bonus. Uh, it's just it's just a three. Okay. Um, so I, I that. you hear a as you throw a dagger over where Marguerite was. Mm -hmm. 
Awesome. And then I want to bonus action disengage 30 feet out of the damn smoke. Please so move your move your I'm token. I'm gonna move my token yeah. and get the hell out of here to like so that's five. No, that's five, ten, fifteen, twenty. Yeah, I'm gonna come over here and protect the mayor. Okay. Love it. Uh, yeah. um, Question? No, 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 it's fine. I'm I'm working out. i what yeah, it's fine. Okay. Some, uh, you know. I'm rolling some death saving throws over here, and uh, Mr. Blue Devil stabilized, which is kind of cool. I know you're excited about that, uh, um, Kaylee. Um, so, Kaylee, it's your turn. Uh, you just put on his hat, and he's mm-hmm. laying he's laying on the ground with one of your daggers still in his side, and you can yeah. see by the way that he's twitching that he's still alive, just unconscious. All right. You also I hear mean, hissing can... and all kinds of other stuff. Lots of horrible things. Yeah. Okie dokies. Um, I would like to reach in to grab my dagger to retrieve it, but sure. instead of just pulling it straight out, I'd like to like twist oh. it on the way out to do oh. some damage. Oh. Are you gonna As apply go? your are you gonna apply your sneak attack to this? Because you could. I mean, yeah. Wow. That's cold, cold blooded. Was he out? Uh, he just stabilized, so this this will definitely end him. Go ahead and roll your damage. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the dagger damage itself. If I do just standard dagger damage for it. Well, you might as well do sneak attack. It's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt to to add okay. it on there. I just want to know how bad <laughs> you kill this guy. <laughs> it looks like total damage fourteen. Oh yeah. So you you twist this dagger and he immediately dies. But then as you're pulling it out, you just decide to, you know, go diagonal instead of, you know, directly pulling it out. And so you just sort of split open his his jerkin and across his chest and you hear a rib pop as blood just leaks down the front of his chest. And he is real dead. (laughs) He has taken his final bow. Yeah. Yeah. And you have his hat. Yeah. And I have a hat. Yes, I do. Yeah. That is my trophy. Thank you. Okay. Uh, you are still in the smoke. Did you want to hang yeah, out Yeah, I'd like or? to... No, I'd like to take a, um, a bonus action to disengage. Okay. And uh, just back up a little bit. Okay. So you're just backing up like five feet? Out yeah, of the smoke? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I... Uh, disengage lets you go what? You can go your full movement. With this oh, you can go your full movement. Yeah. Um. Then I'm gonna back up all the way to the wall so I can at least see 180 around me and have some control of the situation. Okay. Right. As now, you're Kaylee backing up, you see. What's that? I, I said I just I want to be able to have my back against a wall and see a full yeah. 180 because right now Kaylee feels very not in control, which is unusual <laughs> for her. There's no control here. So as you back up and you look around and you pan over. You see Dogberry and Laertes jaws just drop as you gutted their their leader, like their <laughs> idol. You just gutted him right in front of them. Even though it's yeah. smoky, they could still kind of see. And you're you're holding his hat, if not wearing his hat. Wearing it. So their jaws just drop. And I'm gonna roll to see uh if they are either really angry at you or just terrified. Wow. I got a natural 20 and a 15. They want your head. They both scream cool. bloody murder and they look like they want to come right at you. So that's your turn. Great. Elodie. <laughs> All right. So um, Mayor has been whisked away, right? Yes. Yes. Um, and he's not on the board. I, I, I would be able to You see can't him. see anything because of the smoke. Did the smoke move? Because I'm out of the smoke now. No, you're in it. You're still in it. I can see your miniature, or your token. Oh, weird. On my map, it it moved. Oh, what? I just moved what is, it. I just you... moved it. <laughs> oh, okay, maybe it's on a lag. Um, I see. Okay, so I need to get out of this smoke. So I didn't see the mayor get taken away. Did I hear the mayor get taken away? Uh, no. You just heard gurgling and popping sounds. <laughs> <laughs> and screaming. I don't think. I think Otten might have said that something could, about saving. Could have been anyone. Yeah. 
I'm okay. pretty sure Anne would have yelled, I'm I'm saving you. <laughs> Alright, so yeah. so Elodie will will kind of cough and <laughs> back up out of the smoke so she can get her eyes on what's going on here. Sure. Um and it looks like I can just see uh bad boys looking menacingly at Keely. Oh yeah. They they raise their what weapons they have, which isn't much, probably just like a dagger each, but they raise their dagger and they look like they're gonna charge Kaylee. They're furious. She okay. just killed their hero. Okay, I see that. And she's still wearing my my magical token. So She's uh, also wearing a really cool hat. <laughs> oh, so cool. Oh my god, why would they ever want to hurt her? It's such a beautiful hat. Uh, anyway, okay. So she will now use her Mab's grasp and run okay. up to these guys. Okay. Ha! And unleash the arms of Hadar. Okay, how big is that? So that is the erupt. Uh, it erupts uh, ten, all creatures within 10 feet of me. Yeah. Okay. So they make a strength saving throw. Okay. Ten Against, feet of you. Uh, yeah, I'm trying Ooh, to hit baby. both of them. Get it, get it, get it. So like that, uh, right? T- ten yeah. feet. Yeah, ten uh, feet. That's sorry. That's that. fifteen. Five, ten, ten, ten. It's just fifteen on the right side. Right. Wow, this is pretty cool. It's better it doesn't do that much damage ultimately. So, uh, so hold on, it's ten foot radius, right? Um, ten it just says you, think, it just so. says creatures within ten feet of me. Within ten okay. feet. Okay. So okay. yeah. Okay. So then I it would be this radius. right here. Boom. Right. Yeah. Ten feet in all directions. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, do they get saving throws? Yeah, strength saving throw. Okay. My spell save DC is fifteen. And then I'll take half damage of necrotic. Ooh, I rolled pretty well. 11 necrotic damage, or half if they save. Oh, wait. Neither of them save. Second saved. level or higher, the damage increases. I forgot. I are you casting? Warlock. Wait, are you casting at a higher level? Well, I have to cast it at second level as a warlock. Oh, uh, okay. It's okay. a first level spell, apparently. Got it. Um, they both yeah. failed their save, so this might be the end of the bandits. Yes! Oh my god, I rolled so well! This is so yes. unlike me. Um, <laughs> 17 necrotic damage on both. Holy cow. Okay. Wow. So Babs grasp. So you remember how I said the sky went black earlier? Mm. So instead of the sky going black, there's just black tendrils, gaseous black tendrils that spray out in all directions from Elodie. One of the tendrils wraps around the leg, and one of the tendrils wraps around the neck of each of these goons, Laertes and Dogberry, and they're lifted up in the air, and then that you can hear their necks snap, and then they're just kind of dangling there. Oh, that's uh, from the tendrils, and the tendrils continue to lash at them as as their bodies are just being pelted. They oh. are quite dead. In fact, there's no saving throw. There's no death saving throw. They're just dead, dead. Uh, Keely, if you wanted to uh, divert your attention to someone else, I've, I've uh, <laughs> managed to get these ones. Uh, <laughs> statement, uh, oh. obvious statement of the century. <laughs> Horrifying, but well yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, and they're they're literally just being pummeled by these black tentacles, and and their the flesh is being flayed from their bones. It's <gasps> horrific. It's horrific. What? Yeah. Is it's Queen a, is Queen Mab evil? She's she's not necessarily evil, but she's not necessarily good. This, <laughs> is, this is decidedly grotesque. Yeah. 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 Have you seen Warlocks? <laughs> <laughs> My warlock was a Disney princess, so I'm I'm always oh, okay. like shocked well, this, by the shenanigans. This ain't no princess, honey. This is <laughs> this is my world. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yeah, so you're ripping them Can apart. Can somebody clip that? <laughs> uh, who's who's next? Uh, let's see. That was Elodie. Um, decidedly, that was Elodie. And Cece. Hello. Okay. You have a rifle that gets thrown down at you, and then the musketeers are wrestling with each other, and another musketeer blew up. <laughs> 
I think that CC would be concerned as to what is happening with um, their nemesis, and I, uh, I don't know what I can do. Uh, okay. You can enter the smoke. Well, here's a question, <laughs> Jared. <laughs> this is, yeah. uh, as you know, would say shenanigans. There is a like parasol type thing. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. Could I sidle on over to here so that's like 10 feet of movement? Yeah. I do some sort of check to try and like break the parasol and then I want to basically swing it mm -hmm. to see if I can clear the smoke enough so I can see. Sure. So, uh, I can at least see whoever's in front of me. Yes. And try and find. Yes. Minus. However. Uh, that will probably have to be broken up over two turns because your action will be attacking the parasol. Sure. And then I would say your bonus action would be grabbing onto it, and then on your next turn, you could fan it to blow the yeah. smoke away. But you can totally do that. I will... Yes, I will do that. I will do okay, that. go ahead and roll attack on the parasol. <laughs> <laughs> Which I Don't did worry, not I think I was going to be saying today. <laughs> <laughs> Spoken like a true bard. <laughs> Thing is, I rolled a nat one, and I have oh. the lucky feet, but I'm, I am I think this is the dice telling me yeah. that this is a dumb idea. <laughs> and so I'm going to like run up and just fully stack it before I hit the parasol, like yeah. eat a table or whatever yeah. that's underneath it. Sure. Um, I'm going to take that. <laughs> I'm going to take that L. Okay. Um, and I will, uh, I, I will I bonus that. action, yeah. get up, dust myself <laughs> off, and the other few heads will just uh, will shake that, shake their head. Yeah, yeah, they'll <laughs> pop out and just turn around, look back, and Fitz just. Yeah, I think maybe someone else should take jump. Hey, have a think. Uh, so yeah, that's what's happening. I love that. I love that. That's that's a little bit of comedy in in the middle of all this darkness. Much needed <laughs> comedy. Okay. There we go. Uh, and the so mule... that's me. What cool. a great turn. What and the mule turn. kicks. And... Oh, get hit? Oh, actually, hold on, wait. I, have, mm. I do actually have a bonus action, which I can potentially yeah. use. Is anyone around sure. me or that I can see hurt? Well, you're kind of in the smoke now. Um, um, yes, it's true. Uh, you know what? I need to move some of these random pedestrians because they would not have hung out this whole time. Whoops. Mm. Sorry. Let me get rid of that. Because that's not weird. There we go. Could I potentially see the the the, uh, the Baron, uh, the, the the Mayor? Sorry, from here. Uh, you would have seen him before you went into the smoke. Now that you're in the smoke, you probably would not see him. Do you know what? That that one, that was telling me to end my turn. You can <laughs> you go do what you you go do what you need to do. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay, cool. Um. So then, uh, Mule, and it's a mayor's turn. So the mayor, being very cognizant of everything that happened, he puts his hand out on Oberon and says, No, no, you fool. They were trying to save me. It is Lady Marguerite and that damn fool, Hotspur. And immediately Oberon takes his hands off of you and, and apologizes. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm drunk. It's okay. I know. You always are, and that's why it's okay. Uh, and that's the mayor's turn. Uh, <laughs> okay. So, yeah. Kaylee, you are the only person that could possibly see this. So, a massive snake <gasps> crawls out oh. of the smoke. No. It is 15 feet long. No blue in face and like a bright bronze copper uh, color on the, okay. the um, scales of the snake itself. It slithers out. Clearly, it has swallowed something because there's a big lump in it. And it's going to shoot right past you and down this alleyway. What you the will, You will get an attack of opportunity on it uh, if you have, oh no, you used your reaction, didn't you? I to, used, um, well, I used my reaction the turn before last to okay. take the hat. But Correct. the last turn, I just like backed up again, 
or I guess I used disengage to back up yeah. against the wall. That was yeah. a after I the did the, after I, so I, that, the last turn I did the twist of the dagger right. and then disengaged back to the wall. So technically right. I still do have a reaction. Okay. Then take a shot. And by the way, when this yeah, thing's, dude. when this thing slithers by, it's not slow. It's real fast. Uh. In fact, it springs out of the smoke, much like a javelin, and then immediately starts to crawl away. About how fast okay, is it crawling? Well, you don't see it because you're in the hunger of Hadar or whatever you're in, your arms of Hadar. Or do you see it? Can you see out from that? I, Can you I, see I, out? Yeah, I'm, I'm, oh, okay. I don't know what would yeah, then go I'm ahead and seeing. Then go ahead and give me a yeah. um, perception check. Okay. Um, so so just a question with my... That was... <laughs> so good. For my um, attack of opportunity, yes, uh, I probably would not have time to take have taken out my crossbow or my short no. bow, right? No. Okay, so just dagger, just throwing it. Yep. Yep. Well, okay. melee attack. This is a large creature, uh, so it's slithering by you. So you're going to get a free shot at. Okay. Perception was eleven. Uh, it's moving real fast. However, it can also spring <laughs> thirty feet. So it springs thirty feet, and it's going to crawl another thirty depending on how much damage this. Oh. Ha yeah, you're doing a happy dance. I rolled a 20. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. Roll your bones. That's awesome. Roll your bones, man. You All right. This round? I'm sorry? Did you order you sneak attack this round? She gets another sneak attack. Yeah, I didn't before. Okay. You get, so... you get a sneak attack on your turn. And then if anybody else in, uh, triggers your, your, uh, your um, attack of opportunity, then you get another sneak attack because that's somebody yes. else's turn. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so with my dagger, I got six piercing damage, seven sneak attack damage for a total of 13 damage. Okay, great. Now you get to double those dice. So don't double oh, your bonus. I, so you can look at it actually in roll 20 if you uh -huh. want to, but it told me I got a 20, but I think what that means is a dirty, dirty 20, 20, not a natural. Oh, 20. okay. Uh, then yeah, you, you just do You can look at how it hit. is. It, because it looks it looks a little different in this format, but I think it's a dirty twenty. I think it would say twenty plus my yeah. modifier if I got yeah. a nat. I think yeah, it would. Okay. Yeah, just my regular hit, thirteen damage. Okay, so you sink your dagger into this thing, and it rears up and looks back at you for a split second with this weird flanged blue. Uh, um, uh, what are those things called? Um, like Jurassic Park when the, the little fins flip up. Yeah. yeah. And it just turns back <laughs> as you stab your dagger into this thing and you wound it severely, but it's still going. And you do that as it javelins its way into this alleyway and then slithers off. Now, would I know feet. that the snake is Lady Marguerite? Or that'll happen in the smoke, so probably not. Yeah, that'll happen in the smoke, so okay. I don't know if you would have okay. put that together. It's not like she's wearing a tiara or a bodice made of sapphires, so yeah. Yeah, just a, snake a big a snake. is a very funny visual. Yeah, big it's snake comes snake out. snake in the butt. <laughs> yeah, and you yeah, wound it, got it, and it's Do bleeding. Do snakes have butts? I hope no. Are we gonna go snake there? Butt. Are we okay, really sorry, gonna go keep there? Going. <laughs> That's a question for a later time I wanna answer. Okay. <laughs> Uh, we can talk about that on the cooldown. Yeah, yeah, um, the cooldown. That's good cooldown material. Uh, <laughs> really good material. Top shelf. Emilia stumbles out as well. And as she stumbles out, um, uh, obviously concentrating on the spell so that it stays up, she looks over at you, Kaylee, and there's just tears streaming down her face. Uh, and then she runs after the snake. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And then she's going to dash. She's going to dash off. So she yeah. runs out, looks over at you, crying, possibly because of the smoke, although it probably wouldn't affect her because it's her spell. And then um, runs down the alleyway as well. Uh, and that's their turn. Musketeers. Okay, so there's the epic battle of the two musketeers wrestling wow i rolled two 12s they're still what? like just locked <laughs> in this heated moment Cece's arguing back and forth the about smoke and just yeah. goes are you seriously i mean this bit's getting a little old like come on come on uh, one of you 
The other musketeer, however, uh -oh. still under orders, <laughs> sees, <laughs> sees the mayor, and he's going to leap down and probably take some damage because he's dropping 10 feet. Oh, actually, he rolled really well. Uh, tumbles, tumbles to his feet, and he's going to start chasing after the mayor, and he draws his rapier. Oh, 5, okay. 10. I'm going to say it took 10 feet to drop down. 15, 20, 25, 30. So he's almost, almost ready to skewer the mayor. He's poised. Can I see him? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's not, he's not quiet about this. Okay. Uh, and that's the musketeer's turn. We are to Lady Viola, who is dead, 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 and dead, 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 dead. Dogberry dead, dead, dead. and Laertes, who are being flayed and gutted by some evil, harsh magic. <laughs> and then uh, Lord Otten Archimbalm is your turn. Me. Okay, so. I see this ding dong coming towards me and I will immediately take the mayor and like put him behind me. Sure. Um and go ahead then... and move your token and I'll I'll swap with you. Oh, okay, hold on. So just move one to the right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I got it. Like that? There we go. Yep. Okay. And then this Dingle is charging me, so I will take out my um, long sword okay. and like ready my shield and take it out and be like, it doesn't have to end like this. Uh, it is just a misunderstanding. Please do not attack him. He's very badly injured already. Um, and then I would assume he would continue charging me. Is that? What he'll probably uh, well, he will on his turn, so you can hold yeah. your action if you want. I'm going to hold my action, so then as soon as he... I don't want to charge him, but if he gets closer to me, I will attack him as a yeah. means of protection. Yeah, you're going to hold your action, and if he advances, yeah. then you're going to attack. Yeah, yep. I love it. Perfect. Yep. Yep. Uh, yep. He does say in response, he says, The mayor is a traitor and deserves to die. That's what he says. Oh, dear. Yeah. Uh, uh oh, as a well, no, never mind. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, good. Okay, uh, we are back to layer action, so everybody gets to make a deck saving throw, and I'll roll oh, for Layla, oh, who's boy, oh, boy. probably gonna make hers. Yeah, she makes hers. Oh, I make it. <laughs> of course, that's a nat 20. <laughs> <laughs> You're also in the smoke, so it makes sense. Not many people are gonna run into the smoke. Sure, uh, 23. Okay. And Elodie, I don't think anyone's going to come near Elodie. I'm going to say, <laughs> Elodie, you're Auto safe. Saves. Not a lot of crowd people coming over to hang out with the creepy fairy wooden doll thing that's just, gutting two people. I'm just acting on brand. You know? yeah. Yeah. I got an 18. Okay. Yeah, you guys are fine. All right. So we are back up to Layla, who is gone. So I'm going to say, Layla, uh, knowing Layla, as I do over these last few turns, She's going to step forward and try to mess up that musketeer before the musketeer gets to attack the mayor. This feels right. Sounds like something she would do, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. The mayor is the token that's on the left of you, right? Uh, uh, Katie? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Uh, and she hit. So she's going to do her damage. She hits. Five, six... Uh, six plus, uh, she would have at least five from that, so that's 11 plus her other dagger. So, 14. How much wow. do these guys have? Yeah, rogues hit hard at low levels. Mm. He's rogues down, hit hard. Whoa. He's down, yes, yeah, wow. yeah, because he was already wounded from his own gun blowing up in his face. Yeah. So she walks over and, and takes her two daggers and sticks one in his thigh and one in his side. And he seizes up, why? And then curls up <laughs> and passes out on the ground. Uh, so we can let her know how cool she was when she gets back. Okay. Uh, quite dead. Kaylee, it's your turn. Okay. I would like to. Uh, you do notice that I, the smoke is starting, run to, through... starting to dissipate, by the way, because the caster has oh, the... moved. It's not gone okay. yet, but it, it's starting to dissipate. Am I able to run 
through Elodie's spell or should I just avoid that whole area? I think you would take damage. Elodie, what do you, what do you, what do you say? Do you need me to look it up? It's a, uh, it's not an area of an effect. Um, well, I guess so, it is because it's a, it was a saving throw, but it, it, it's instantaneous. So, so it doesn't continue doing damage. Mm-mm. It just is the one round of mm-hmm. lashing out. Okay. Yeah. Well then I'm going to say that it's, uh, also fading. So yeah, you can run through there without being hit. Okay, then what I'm gonna do is run 25 feet to, uh, this is the front of the stage we were performing on, yes? Yeah, you gotta give me acrobatics or athletics to vault onto the stage, but I'm pretty sure you're gonna be able to do that without any problems. Oh man, that's a 10. That's what you need, you need a 10. Whoa. Oh, so yeah. I just it's only no it's only player. it's only five feet up. So it's like you run <laughs> over and lift yourself. The only reason why Otten had a hard time is because Otten's covered in armor. So it would be makes sense. Got it. It's a little yeah. You, okay. Great. You struggle. You struggle a little bit to lift lift yourself up, but you you manage to get up on the stage. I've been through a lot, um. So I'm gonna run up to that point yeah. and uh, make an announcement to the crowd. Sure. Sure. Ooh. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, my fellow performers and I were here to entertain you when others went in and took it all and took it awry. But we have saved the day and your mayor is safe. But if anyone wants to stick around and give us information about what may or may not have happened, if you have a towns member who might be a snake, we would love to hear this. Thank you so much for your time. Okay, great. Uh, Roll performance. (laughs) Roll performance. Okay. I'm genuinely curious to see if any of the panicking townsfolk are going to stop and, and listen. That's a 14. Okay. I'll say the drunken goblins are at least listening to you. They've been hanging out, enjoying the show. <laughs> I so have a th- fancy hat. Yeah. They're like, hey, that was the blue guy's hat. Good job. <laughs> But most everyone else is is panicking and running away at this point. So I'm going to say this person and this person and this person, especially with all of the horrible evil spells that have been going off. Most people are are clearing out. All of these NPCs that I have elaborate backstories for, (laughs) gone. Bye-bye. The bartender, I'm going to say he runs away. The barmaid. She runs away. So the goblins are actually at the bar at this point, stealing booze and just thoroughly enjoying themselves. <laughs> and and they listen to your little performance on the stage and they, you know, they give you the thumbs up. Okay. okay. Well. Uh, um, we're more or less out of combat. Uh, there are the two musketeers. There's one musketeer left. Um, who's unconscious and two musketeers that are in this epic, epic wrestling battle with each other. I wish I had a bardic inspiration to give to my one, but I don't have any. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm gonna say- uh, What about the one point, that's charging me? He he got dropped. Layla oh, dropped him. Yeah. Layla, yeah. Amazing. Uh, this can go away. All right, uh, can I yeah. ask real yeah. quick, Jared, before the smoke goes away? Yeah. Um, would I be able to, is, like, could I do, like, a quick investigation whilst I'm in the smoke to see who's still in there? Uh, yeah. Um, you just want an observation check to see if you see other people left? Yeah, like, left? Whilst, I was, whilst I was in there, like, I know, obviously, it's going to be, like, a disadvantage or whatever. I'm just seeing if, Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, let's see... Oh, wow. I rolled a 16 and a 17. So that's a okay. total of 21. So the only thing that you're going to gain from this mm-hmm. observation check is that you notice there's something laying open on the ground with a bunch of um, sparkly uh, like beams of light reflecting off of it. Uh, you also might see the tail of a giant snake, but that would go around the corner within a matter of seconds. Okay. Uh, and everything else is just blood and death. There's a quite dead arch nemesis of yours laying face down with a dagger in his back. <sighs> mm-hmm. There's uh, a blue swashbuckler who's 
been gutted. There's a couple dead guards. Like there's a lot of carnage in this this uh, uh, market area. I'm more than happy for you to uh, rule this, rule against this DM. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if I made a dive for that sparkly thing, yeah, thinking that I possibly know what it might be. Well, there's several sparkly things. There's not just one. Oh, I see. There's yeah. Several sparkly things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, as in, like, but together, like in an, in like an area or. Yes. I tell you what, why don't we go to intermission uh, a little bit early? And uh, when we pick back up, we can take the aftermath of this moment. Because I'm going to say at this point, the battle's over. Like you guys would cool. eventually be able to tie up or put down the musketeers, whatever it is that you want to do with them. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming you're not going to slaughter the musketeers. You're going to keep them... Uh, alive or or at least unconscious. I could flip a coin for it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, you never know. You never know with player characters. Um, but yeah, other than that, I'm going to say the combat's over at this point. So why don't we go to intermission, and when we come back, we can figure out the, the aftermath and do part two. And hopefully at that point we can okay. get Unadi back with us as well. <laughs>
Hey, and we're back. And we took a much longer break than what <laughs> I originally thought. Uh, some minor technical issues. So uh, we're back to do part two of part two of the Sapphire Lights Festival. Uh, as you can see, we're wearing different clothes. Well, most of us. <laughs> Um, and uh, it's, I've it's been, been wearing a little bit. this the whole time. Oh yeah, for one week. <laughs> Jessica, I have not is changed my method. clothes at all. Oh, Very definitely method. smell French. Cross invitation needed over there. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, yeah, so we had some technical issues, but we're back. We want to give you the rest of this story, so uh, we're going to do part two of part two of the Sapphire Lights Festival, uh, and let's jump right back into it. So the battle has just sort of wound down. The ma we'll call it a massacre. Um, there's there's dead bodies. <laughs> we'll casually yeah. refer to it as a massacre. Yeah, there's okay. dead bodies. <laughs> there's blood everywhere. And there's a bunch of uh, people that have um, panicked and fled. You have rounded up those three swashbucklers that seem to have been suggested or mind controlled, convinced that the mayor had done some horrible treasonous act and needed to be brought in one way or the other. Uh, the mayor is also standing at the edge of the stage and he's a little worse for wear. He's got a big bite on his neck from the constrictor snake that was wrapped around him. And he, he, he looks a little peaked, um, but he wants to get to the bottom of this. He wants to know what happened. Uh, the smoke has cleared from that big dark cloud that Amelia had created and Elodie's Super creepy, horrific uh, arms of Hadar that flayed uh, Dogberry and Laertes has also dissipated. And so the, the battle has now come to an end, um, but now you have the aftermath that you're kind of piecing together. Um, uh, Fitz, you look out across the cobblestone floors and you notice all of those little baby sapphires are beginning to twinkle a little bit more than before because the smoke is dissipating. You also see that brass key that you're guessing might belong to uh, um, the uh, mule that's still tied up over on the other side of the stage. And the only people that seem to be uh, thoroughly entertained and um, happy about what just happened are the incredibly drunk goblins that have uh -huh. raided the bar. Uh, and have started to um, hand out alcohol to anyone that wants it, but also they're just randomly tossing bottles and letting them shatter against the wall uh, and making a huge mess. Uh, so we'll start this scene with uh, the five of you have started to gather together around those swashbucklers and the mayor who's uh, trying to piece together what happened and trying to uh, um, question them. Uh, what do you mean? What, what orders? And one of the swashbucklers who's sort of coming to and coming out of this haze looks up. We were ordered by the captain of the guard to bring you in, if not kill you, for treason. What? And he seems genuinely confused. What are the rest of you doing? I am stealing sapphires that have fallen on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Uh, there's quite a few. Uh, I tell you what, roll 2d6, and uh, that's how many you scoop up uh, while you also notice that you're not the only one that sees these baby sapphires and um, is pilfering them. There's random townsfolk that are doing the same. Can I? I get nine. Uh, great. Great. Uh, can I find a, a townsfolk and. Uh, just one that looks a little bit rougher and more rough and ready. Uh, and Fitz um, is going to just walk up to them and go, listen, I um, have a little bit of coin here and some sapphires. If you could, um, you see this body here? If you could make sure it's not uh, taken away with the rest of them, uh, I'd, uh, I have business with it. Yeah. I'll make it worth your while. Let's say half now and half when I return to collect the body. All right, give me an observation check to see if you can find someone shady enough to... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, I need the shadiest... To stash. The shadiest person in this square right now. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. Perception, that is a dirty 20. Oh, great. Uh, yes, there is a, uh, a grizzled-looking... Um, uh, almost looks kind of like a Viking 
uh, with a, like a ratty um, mustache and beard hanging down, his head shaved. He's got several tattoos on uh, both sides of his head, wearing uh, not the traditional wear that you would see in Claire de Lune. It's more like a um, hides, a patchwork of hides. Uh, and you kind of gesture for him to come over. And at first he's oh, confused, but he steps forward. Yeah. Uh, you see this um, this body on the floor. I um, I have previous with the, um, well, the former owner, I guess, of the body. If you could um, find a place to hide this and then wait around, I I'll be back in a few hours. I have some business to tend to. Uh, I shall uh, make it worth your while. I have a few sapphires and a little gold in it for you. You notice that, that he's pocketing something that he <laughs> recently pilfered from the ground as well. Uh, but, I'll double uh, whatever you just put in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he he smiles and he's missing quite a few teeth. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'll uh, I'll do that for you. Sure. Where uh, do you want me I, to put it? Can I do an inside check on this guy? Make sure that he's actually going to do this. <laughs> sure. <laughs> uh, that's a seventeen. Uh. He he seems to be the kind of guy to where as long as you pay him enough, he'll mm -hmm. he'll do what you want him to do within reason. Like he's not going to risk his life or anything. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, like obviously, if more uh, uh, musketeers show up and he gets questioned, he might tell them where the body is at that. Sure, point. that's that's fine. That's yeah. fine. Uh, thank you, my good man. <laughs> sure, uh, you want to meet here later on tonight or something? Yes, that's uh, called a few hours. We have some business to attend to. Me and my, uh, I, I guess, new companions might need to uh, go and investigate what's what's gone on here. But uh, then I shall come find you and, um, well, uh, you shall have your reward. I, I just want to say I really appreciated your uh, performance earlier. <laughs> it, was, it was well done. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, I always appreciate uh, someone who, who uh, enjoys the arts as much as I do. And you know, if you ever want to uh, come out to my village, I'm sure I could get you a stage and quite a few people interested in watching you perform. Huh. That doesn't... Uh, doesn't They're a little rough anyway. around the edges, but... Hmm. Oh, we've dealt with quite a rowdy crowd, so I'm sure we'd be fine. Good. <laughs> Good. I'll see you later on tonight, then. Okay. Okay, Fitz turns around and uh, you just hear... He of, picks uh, up the body and it's still got the <laughs> dagger sticking out of his back. It's this little gnome, this like crude little gnome. He just throws it over his shoulder like a sack of potatoes and starts walking off through the middle of the uh, the, the square with all the shops. Uh, and you do you, notice that people are looking at him and looking at what he's doing, but <laughs> nobody stops him. This so. this guy, what a what a strange fellow. He just picked up a dead body. Why would he? That's so strange. Why would he do that? Uh, you you see, Vitz's uh, voice voice changed. Goes goes slightly higher into more a feminine voice. Uh, as you just uh, you just hear a well, Vitz. Out of all of your ideas, that one was probably one of the worst. This is definitely going to come back to bite us in the ass later. Anyway, <laughs> and I'll uh, join the the rest of the. Okay, thing. so what are the rest of you doing? Um, I have a question. The the Please. two swashbucklers, uh, not the musketeers, but the swashbucklers that Elodie had um, yeah. handled, will say, Play. are they are they totally taken care of? They're not coming back. Yeah, you really don't think they're gonna. I, I mean, they might come back <laughs> in the sense to where like a necromancer could bring them back, but they're not okay, coming great. back as as they were. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Um, so what I would like to do then, Kaylee is still on the stage. I would like to turn around and uh, extend an arm to Elodie and okay. come, come on stage quickly, quickly. Uh, what's about to, what's, what's, okay, okay. What's yes, going yes, on? come up here uh, and uh, take off my red hat. Look to the audience and try this again. <laughs> <laughs> but with Elodie up on stage with me. Okay. Good people, you are now safe. Lessons hide in victory and defeat. And today, my teammates and I, as I look at Elodie, are the victors. The danger has been eliminated. And I go to take a bow, and I look over at Elodie and say, bow, bow. Oh, um, uh, she does an awkward small curtsy. Uh. <laughs> I'll uh, press to take some lights to dance around uh, Kaylee as she's doing this, uh, okay. this speech. Like some, some like sapphire looking lights to kind of dance around them. And Kaylee looks up anxiously to see if anyone besides the drunk goblins cares this time. Otten is Ro clapping <laughs> vigorously. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. 
Uh, the, the, I'm going to say the mayor and the musketeers seem to be in their own little world right now, but uh, you can certainly roll uh, performance uh, or persuasion to try to convince some of the crowd to, to pay attention to you. Okay. Do the lights help at all? Yeah, I, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Uh, go ahead and take advantage on that. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, that's an 18. Okay. Uh, so here's the deal. You're, you're performing to a crowd that just went through hell. Yeah. And the ones that are coming back seem to be the ones that are more interested into like pilfering the gems or figuring out if the mayor is dead or not or gossiping. Mm -hmm. um, the goblins love you. Like they think you're, <laughs> you know, the next uh -huh. uh, t big town folk hero. Um, but the 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 rest of the general public they're kind of looking up at you but confused by what you're saying because they're also drawn into all of the other drama that's happening at the same time so i'm going to say that you definitely won over the goblins uh and there are a few town folk that are coming back out that are again trying to piece together what happened here that are listening to you uh, we will take questions at any time. Oh, one of the goblins raises his hand. Uh, yes. Yes. You, yeah. uh, yes uh, uh, what are you going to do about the gem? Uh, Elodie? Um, well, as uh, this talent show was interrupted i do not know if a, a winner has been determined but um when we the were mayor... the best we were the best in round one okay we uh, well uh unfortunately that is not up to me so i think once the mayor who has been devastatingly injured has recovered in full he will uh he will make an announcement to see uh what perhaps the winner is or i don't know maybe there will be a, a second talent show the mayor, when you say this, kind of breaks from his questioning of the musketeers and he turns around and looks up at you on the stage. We must get the gem back. It is vital. It must not fall into the wrong hands, Elodie. Uh, and uh, what exactly is that? It is the heart of the city. Aha. Uh -huh. And what would uh, happen, say, it should fall into the wrong person? Well, it is hands? a very rare, very... It is a king's, it is worth a king's ransom. It could be used to start wars. It could be used to uh, create a, a magical item of, of immense power. Let me just put you a little bit further away from this microphone that I am holding. <laughs> just so no one can hear. Uh, uh, can Fitz slide over and just be like to the mayor, like, uh, I'm, excuse me if I'm prying, but I'm assuming you didn't get too much out of those guards. He takes two very big steps away from you and his hand comes up to the side of his neck you you stay away from me oh. i remember your story look and he pulls his hand away and he's got the two pronged uh holes in his neck where the constrictor snake bit him but it's very much like that moment in your story where the spider the spider had stabbed someone in the neck and he's um. staring at you as if you're a possible uh, threat. I'll I'll take the stiletto out. I'll like, unsheath it. Uh, I'll hold it by the blade as not to threaten. Uh, and so, with all due respect, uh, my good mayor, uh, you would already be dead had I shoved this thing into your neck twice. So, given the fact you're still alive, I do believe there might be someone else to blame. Did anyone else see anything in relation to this possible injury that our mayor, our good mayor, has sustained? Um, what type of thing are we looking for? A, a spider is in your story? Um, yes, or anything else that bites, potentially. Oh, did anyone else see the, uh, the, the very, very large serpent that escaped during everything going on? <laughs> there was a large serpent? Uh, oh, oh yes. I was I, hoping that, that was that just might a have spell. Been, you see, I, I assumed that whoever did this was still here among us and hiding, perhaps, but if, uh, where is this large serpent? I don't see one here. Well, uh, El Elodie, you saw it too, yes? I, uh, well, I, I, th I saw something of the sort, but I, I was really hoping it was a spell or something. But uh, apparently not. Oh. It is actually, in fact, a large creature that is slith slithered away. 
Uh, yes, yes, I did. I did well, see something slither away. Uh, I, I don't believe it was an illusion because I was able to wound it. Yes, I did. I got it. It, it still got away in the commotion, but um, I, I was it. able to wound it. And then there was a crying woman. Uh, the, the woman that was with the evil child. Oh, no. Oh, okay. Amelia. Uh, Her name's Amelia. <laughs> You see uh, Fitz's uh, vis- visage changes now uh, to that of a slightly shorter, uh, like slighter black woman. Um, and uh, she uh, immediately goes, enough of this. Did you say you stabbed it? Walks, uh, it's gonna walk over what? and investigate where the- s- What s- happened? <laughs> what happened to that? Oh, what, no. Where did she come from? It's, where did you, she come you, from? Excuse me, excuse me. Bl- you I saw am the waiting play. for a moment, but my chin mail is stuck on this stool and I cannot run away and I am very I'll change, scared. I'll change back into Fitz, just slap Autumn around the face and say, It's me! Remember the play? It's kind of what I do and I'll change back into um. Maeve. <laughs> it is much more scary when you're not on the stage. I, on the stage there is the magic and the acting, but in real life I'm not expecting this. So, sorry. <laughs> I, uh, I apologize, Otten. Would you be able to aid me in trying to investigate this area around here? Oh, yes, uh, if you see... could help me. My chainmail has been stuck on the stool for the last 10 minutes and I cannot get off. It's a bit your, big. Your chainmail has been stuck on the stool. I'm stuck on the stool. There's like a, a sliver <laughs> or something that's stuck onto my chainmail and I cannot get off. I'm, I'm going to die with these fools, aren't I? I'm going, this something's going to kill me. The only other but, option is we cut the stool off the ground and I take the stool with me. I guess if you cannot get the chainmail off the stool or I have to take off my pants. <laughs> wow. uh, Maeve's, Maeve's just going to go, how about we just cut the chainmail off the stool? Uh, just give a little <laughs> of, a, of a rapier and just... <laughs> oh, thank All you. Right. Just give, me a, a, just give me a basic attack. Oh, <laughs> oh no, I knew you were going to let me do this. Why, man? That is, however, a uh, 25. Okay, well, we'll just say that your overall frustration with the situation, you you, you use, you know, a, a pretty a pretty decent amount of force to just kind of whack this uh, stool yeah. hard enough to where you hear one of the chains go bing and pop and the stool falls off of Otten's rare um you. but you also notice that uh the chainmail immediately fixes itself so even though you damaged it a little bit you notice that her her chainmail shimmers a tiny bit his chainmail shimmers a little bit and it looks completely pristine in fact out of all of you otten is the only one who doesn't have any blood who doesn't have any sweat looks it just looks immaculate hmm Okay, what do you want my help with now? Uh, uh, if you could, uh, look, let, let's, we are looking for a serpent. Yes, I do believe okay. that's what you said, Kaylee. So yes, yeah, snake hunting. Uh, we are snake hunting, Otten. Do you have any experience with hunting in the wild? Okay, that's what does anybody, no, do? I do not, but sometimes I play hide and seek within my manor. And a fun thing to do is, uh, what does a snake like to eat? Like, uh, like treats. Um, well, mayors, apparently. Okay, so we could take the mayor and lure it out with the mayor, but that seems a bit dangerous. I have very important things I must go attend to. I have to figure out what is happening here with the, the, the city watch and the, the captain of the guard. I, I'm sorry, Elodie, but I must ask you to clean this mess up and, and find the gem. All right? Just, uh, just Excuse me. clean the blood everywhere in the cobblestones and the body pieces. It, it, I will at, do... least, at least do the best you can until the city watch has arrived. They should be here any second. Uh, my and good he, mayor, leaves, he leaves, uh, my good he leaves, he starts uh, to leave in a half. Just, just quickly before you um, mm. rush off, may, might I ask a bit of a peculiar request from you? I, 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 I understand how important finding this gem is. And I have something of a plan formulating in which we might be able to ensure you are taken out of the firing line of whoever is trying to harm you and ensure the safe return of the gem. All I would require is one small thing. Your clothes. (laughs) Uh, Okay, Uh, that's going to be a hard one. So go ahead and roll persuasion. (laughs) Definitely giving you disadvantage on this because he does not trust you at all. That is fine by me. With disadvantage, that is a 19. Wow. All right. Holy well, moly. Uh, yeah. 
your borderline supernatural charisma comes into effect and he he looks at you very confused but he's a smart enough man to where he can kind of piece together what he thinks you're going to do with this and instead of just stripping naked and handing over his clothes he says i have a change of clothes nearby do you remember the green room that you're staying in with the pictures yes i have a second set of clothes in there that i was going to change into because it is a very hot day and i planned on changing my wardrobe at least once today okay. you may have that uh, I but do me it. a favor mm. protect her and he points and looks up at Elodie. Well, seeing what Elodie did on the battlefield, I think that she'll be protecting me, if anything. But I appreciate that. Thank you, and I'll take off towards the green room. Just okay. as he says that, Elodie is is leaning down and, and just jumps at a big glob of blood that has suddenly scared her from the cobblestones. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, at this I... point, you do notice, other than the drunk goblins, you do notice that some of the city folk are actually coming back into this area. Uh, other than the people that were pilfering the sapphires that were on the ground. And they're starting to ask a lot of questions and the area is starting to get crowded again. It's almost like, uh, you know, after the, the big bar fight happens and the bar gets cleared out, then people show up wanting to know what happened at the bar fight. Only in this case, it was a giant battle massacre. Um, is there like a really, really high point somewhere? Um, like the, the highest point, point, yeah, the highest point would be either on top of a building or on top of the, the stage. The stage is only five feet up, but if you wanted to, you could literally scale one of the buildings that are nearby. Yes, I'd love to scale the highest building. Okay. Uh, please. Yeah. Um, and... No need to roll because you're a thief and you're a and... Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I want to just have a good look around for anything that might be snake-like. Any sure. like residual commotion as well? Like I'm pretty sure like a snake escaping in yeah. the city would cause something. And it was a massive blood. snake. Yeah, like it was a, a 15 massive... foot long snake. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, like I'm looking for that. Yeah, I, I, I hear you. Uh, so give me, uh, give me perception. Okay. Uh, and give me a survival. Okay, cool, awesome. On perception, we have got a 22. Great. On um, survival, we have got a, hang on a sec, where is it? A plus three, a 15. Great. Uh, so not only do you pick the perfect building, because as soon as you get to the top of the building, you see a carriage uh -huh. off in the distance, uh -huh. literally just like rampaging down this main street and people yeah. having to get out of the way of the mm -hmm. carriage. But you also notice a bloody trail, much like a snake slithering while bleeding would leave, down an alleyway and then uh, down a street, I should say, and then up a dark alleyway. A dark alleyway. Yeah. Okay. And you do notice that there's some townsfolk that are sort of checking that out as well. Okay. The, the bloody trail and what have you. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to uh, backflip down off of the building um, <laughs> and land like a cat, meow. Okay. Um, and then I'm going to relay all of that information back to everyone else that okay. there's this carriage and this bloody trail. And I think those are our two leads. Okay. Where did you come from? <laughs> Arden, I came from the room, the, the building. Everybody here like surprises. <laughs> I just came from above you. Are, are, are you okay? It's very scary. There is a snake on the loose. Have you heard? We are. I am hunting it. I have been put in charge of the the hunt party by him. Or her. Okay. Yeah, yeah, at the yes, moment, yes. I don't know anymore. Yes, yes, yes. We are hunting it, and there seems to be a trail this way uh, to a dark alley, and then also that way. Um, there is a carriage causing Excellent. havoc. I appoint you as my commanding officer because you have the most knowledge of anybody in this body on how to hunt a snake. Thank I am you. trusting you. <laughs> thank you very much for that. No, thank you. Uh, I will tell everybody. Yeah, Otten definitely doesn't seem like the brightest bulb, but for some reason <laughs> when he says these things, you actually feel somewhat inspired. Like you feel like, you know, like, you know, you're you're being given real power, in other mm. words. Mm. He um, is a lord after all. Okay. Uh I will look I basically I want to ask everyone. So 
Uh, out of the two leads, what do you think we should all pursue? Excuse me, everybody! Listen up! My first officer is speaking! <laughs> you will give respect! <laughs> the only yeah, people yeah, yeah. that, that actually listen at that point, there's the, there's the two musketeers that are tied up that just kind of like, you know, tense up for a moment and they're they're looking over at you like why are you screaming all of a sudden in fact one of them goes why are you screaming we are we are right here your life is in danger there is a gigantic snake who could chomp you up at any moment well then why are you why did you tie us up let yeah, us go you are putting our lives in danger it's a tricky circle of life okay <laughs> no more questions uh, DM, did I find the clothes okay in the... Uh, yes. Yes. Oh. Uh, I shall emerge as Maeve, but wearing these very black baggy clothes now. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, and they're, they're very frilly. Like you have uh, ribbons and, and uh, what have you uh, <laughs> hanging off of your chest, including little uh, medals that have been uh, obviously given to the mayor at some point. This is his, his nice evening wear outfit as opposed to what he was wearing earlier. Much too much. Yes. Very, very, very over the top. Mm. <clears throat> yeah. <sighs> I must endure. Right, What's what are we doing? What's the plan? Um, Otten, well, leader of the snake hunting party, what's going on? <laughs> I will defer to my first officer right here. Please, oh, everybody. Well, signed first officer. Uh, Layla, Amazing. Uh, Yes, meow. So there is a, a carriage. <laughs> there, there is a carriage speeding through the town down the main road. They look very suspicious. People are having to jump out of the way. And further along, there is, look over there, a bloody trail leading to a dark alleyway, uh, much like a snake's trail. Which, what, uh, where, do you, where should we go? Are they in the same direction or are they in different directions? Sorry. So uh, the, the bloody trail leads off to an alleyway, mm -hmm. which, which that alleyway would then connect to the main street main one of the street. main streets where the carriage probably would have come from yeah that way i guess yeah it's the alleyway Good. shall we yeah. the first officer i have a question are you saying mm -hmm. that we have a snake who can drive a carriage <laughs> otin just just you just hang back uh, for a moment and, okay. and and i will relay information to you and um, trust but you. First, let us go and then... I'm just thinking about the logistics of a carriage that has no uh, hands available to drive it, so I'm just going to be thinking about that in the back, okay? Yeah, process Thank you for that, leaving. I trust you, you I trust you. you. Okay, <laughs> okay, I will be processing. <laughs> okay. okay, so all of you are following the bloody snake trail, yes? Mm. Uh, before we go off back through that alleyway, sure. I would love to um, just peruse the blue devil's body to see if sure. maybe his rapier is still intact and mm, up for is. the grabbing since mine is broken. It is, yeah. I, and would, I would like very, to doink that. Sure, that very fancy dagger that he used to break your sword is also laying there. I would also love to yoink that if there possible. You go. Beautiful. Uh, hold on a second though. Uh, um, do 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 me a favor. Roll what I call a luck roll. So just roll a flat uh, d20. I want to see if anybody might have stolen it before you got to it. Okay. Uh, 19. Oh, yeah. You're good. Yeah. Nobody touched his body. Like, nobody. They were too busy pilfering the gems to worry about, you know, uh, and plus Hotspur might still have a few friends left. So yeah. So you walk over and you're, it's free game. You pick up his rapier, which is very nice. It's not magical or anything, but it's very well made. Uh, and then that special uh, weapon breaking dagger. Okay, what is the name of it? Uh, it's called a main gauche. Okay. Um, but it. it's it's uh, a sword breaker main gauche. Okay. Um, you're not gonna find it anywhere because I made it from scratch. Uh, but okay, uh, well, as far as the game mechanics are concerned, you can you can do uh, one of two things. You can use your action to intentionally disarm someone that has has a blade out. It has to be a bladed weapon. It can't be bludgeoning. Okay. It has to have some form of blade. Uh, even a spear would be considered a blade, though. So piercing and slashing. You can disarm that with that dagger. The other thing that you can do with that dagger is you can hold your action and attempt to break their weapon, if it is a weapon that is breakable, if that makes sense. Cool. Like if it's a massive claymore, chances are you're not gonna break it with a little dagger. 
But if it's a rapier, you could certainly try to snap it. Those are okay, the two perfect. abilities. Yeah. And it's nice. those are both action based abilities. So it Great. takes your action to disarm or your action, held action to break the weapon. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, cool. So you can actually pilfer those on your way since it's that's the way the snake went. Um, and while you guys are traveling down that bloody path, uh, go ahead and give me, uh, whoever wants to, another survival check to to follow that trail of snake blood. Could I instead do a quick uh, stealth uh, just to, I want to duck into an alley and uh, come out very, literally very, very, like the second afterwards. Sure. Okay. There are a lot of no people around, so mm -hmm. go ahead and give me stealth at disadvantage if you're trying to hide from everyone, everyone. Sure. It's not, yeah, it's, it's not like, just as long as I'm out of the way, but I'll sure. give it a go. Wow, I rolled two 17s. That is outrageous. Uh, that is a 22. There you go. Wow. So you even even though there's a ton of people around and they're all sort of milling about talking about it, you you managed to duck yourself into a little shady corner and transform. And as you step back out, you, <laughs> get, a, you get a lot of attention because a the lot of people just heard. Yeah, just a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people just heard that the mayor's life was threatened. Mayor, are you all right? Uh, oh, I'm so been, worried about you. It is an overwhelming experience uh, to uh, be uh, so put in the line of uh, fire like that, but I have made of sturdy stuff and I lead this town in such a way that I could not leave you without a mayor. So I am going to get back the, uh, the sapphire now. So do not worry, the mayor is on it. Let's go party, where are we going? Let's go, <laughs> uh, let's hurry along. <laughs> so you kind of talk your way out of that which is very mayor-esque of you. And and you managed to follow this trail of blood. So I need a survival check from somebody. 18. Perfect, good enough. So you follow the trail of blood quite a ways, and then it ducks into, like I said, another alleyway. This alleyway is dark. It's two buildings that are very close together. It's very narrow, even though the sun hasn't set. It's definitely much darker here. And the bloody trail stops, but because you rolled well enough on your survival, you see two sets of footprints. The blood trail also stops, but you see two sets of footprints going down this alleyway. I, 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 I hightail it down the alleyway. Okay. Is everybody following? I'll see if I see those as well. Sure. I also tell my party what I see. Oh, <laughs> you you say it? Okay. Yeah, I, I uh, say oh, it. I don't just this is very that. smart. So now we are looking for a snake who can drive a wagon and has force legs <laughs> and who is wounded do not and forget. who is wounded the yes. puzzle is coming together first officer you do not let me down you are doing so good <laughs> yeah, thank you best thank decision you i ever much. made putting, yes. putting him yeah. in charge wow yeah exactly so uh, are the rest of you following down this alleyway okay so you get down to the end of the alleyway layla and uh uh it opens up again and sure enough in the middle of this and this is a more of like an uh, industrial uh, street. There's like uh -huh. warehouses and what have you. Uh -huh. There was a carriage that was parked here and you can uh -huh. see by the, uh, the wagon wheel tracks uh -huh. that um, in, in on the ground and in the dirt, because it's partial cobblestone, partial, partial dirt, that uh, it had gone off uh, very abruptly to the northeast out of the city. Uh, and you see several uh, crates on the opposite side of the street. Mm -hmm. And the two sets of footprints, one of those sets goes up to the carriage marks and stops. The other set of footprints goes past the carriage marks over to where those crates are. Um, I'm going to immediately turn around um, and relay that information uh, to my party mates behind me before I completely leg it towards the crate. Great. Go and check what's going on there. Roll, anybody that wants to roll perception may roll perception. Okay. 19. No more. Oh, you guys are killing it. Ooh. Better save some of those rolls for later. Oh, <laughs> I wonder why. why. <laughs> I, a four from Kaylee. Okay. <laughs> I got Kaylee's, a 19. Kaylee's like, there's no audience here. Why do we care? <laughs> yeah. What's the point? Uh, well, let it be though. Um, Sorry, so uh, anybody that got uh, uh, an 18 or above uh, can 
barely hear from those crates uh, audible sobbing. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to smash the crate open. I'm just gonna, like, <laughs> close in. Oh, oh, oh yeah. that's perfect. So you, mittens, you this, grab this, onto this crate <laughs> while everyone's trying to trying to like slow you down. You just grab onto this crate, rip it off to the side, and there's this, uh, you know, portly woman. I mean, she's dressed in, in nice clothes, but she obviously, you know, likes her pastries. Uh, pale faced, tears streaking down her eye. Her makeup's just a complete and utter mess. Her hair is tousled. It's Amelia and she's just shaken. She's crying. And when you rip the crate out of the way, she uh, starts to panic. Oh, uh, I'm so sorry. We didn't mean, I didn't mean to, it, it was a mistake. She made me do it. I'm going to, um, I'm going to retract open my clothes and just go talk now. Uh, uh, roll intimidate. <laughs> it's like a cat meets a motorcycle. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that is, oh, that's not great. That's a 10. Okay. So uh, it's not quite the effect you wanted it to have. You, you, you do scare her, but you scare her in the sense to where she clams up and she starts to back away from you and she starts looking around. Uh, uh, Lilo, and she looks mind? towards one alleyway, the alleyway on the side of that building and she uh -huh. starts to itch her way that direction. Uh, I'm gonna grab her and then I'm going to bring her over to the other people. <laughs> I'm just gonna like okay. grab her, like a, like a mother cat grabbing like a kitten. I'm just gonna like put sure. her into my mouth and carry her over. Sure, <laughs> let me get her stats up and you can give me a grapple check. Okay. Ooh, let's see. I'm not that she strong. is. She is not strong. So. Neither am I. <clears throat> I got a twelve. Oh, come um, on, come on. The rest of oh, you are got, welcome to a, do something. I got a as well. twenty-two. I got a. 22. Oh yeah. Whoa. So nice. So you you sort of like s snatch her. You grab oh. her with your claws and you pull her out into the street. Really. Uh, and there's a couple people that are giving you strange looks, but there's so much going on elsewhere that it's this is not this is not the main action, obviously. But you snatch her and you pull her out into the street so that uh, the rest of the party can uh, interact with her as well. Oh. I'm sorry, I, I I had no choice. She would kill me. She would kill my family. She would kill everyone that I ever knew. Who, who is she? Lady Marguerite, of course. My lady. She is the one behind all of this. What need would she have for a sapphire? She's a very wealthy, powerful woman herself. It is not just a sapphire. It is the heart of the mountain. It holds so much power. She is going to use it in the ritual. The ritual? Yes. Do you know what this entails? Yes. I have already said too much. I'm uh, sorry. Excuse me, El. I'm so sorry that my uh, friend has. Uh, her eyes get please. very wide uh, when she sees the mayor standing <laughs> in front of her, who they yeah. just tried to kill. <laughs> there is no hard feelings. Mayor. I know that you are under duress. You were uh, struggling with this uh, moral conflict, and you were merely doing the best that you can. So, all you have to do is tell us where she is doing this uh, ritual and we will go and stop her and all shall be forgiven. You shall be absolved of any involvement in this crime. It is too late. You are all too late. She has gone to the old mine. Old mine, okay, old mine, old mine. Anyone, where is the old mine, anyone? <laughs> uh, would, Otten, would Otten know where that is? So she seems a little, a little, you can tell her eyes narrow, like she's a little confused when you're like, you don't know where the old mine is. The old mine is is literally like what the town was founded on. That's the original Sapphire mine uh, that they that they they found the first few gems in. And that's what made this town explode uh, over the last hundred years into what it is now, the boom town that it is now. Uh, it was originally uh, a, a cave. 
um, that they mined the sapphires out of. Uh, you would know this, Auden, and Elodie, you would know this as well because you know the general history of the town. Mm -hmm. uh, but after a while, they realized that there were more direct paths into the, the mountain, uh, better veins of, of gems uh, and um, rare minerals and, and what have you. So the old mine just kind of got abandoned at that point. Okay, and um, do you know of any way to uh, stop this uh, ritual? Well, if she doesn't have the gem, then she can't do the ritual. Okay. But you must know, mm -hmm. she is not alone. The cult of the serpent, they're everywhere. And she looks around, and as she looks around, you notice that there's a couple shady people that are just hanging out, staring at you. I would not want to be the mayor right now. <laughs> oh, can can all of these um, cult members transform into snakes? No, just mm. Lady Marguerite. She uh, comes from a long line. Her family, they were here before the sapphires were found. Huh. Is, is the old mine in towards the northeast. Yes, it is in the Forgotten Woods. Okay, cool, 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 cool. So um, I, I think it is a good idea for me to maybe run some reconnaissance in terms of keeping an eye on that carriage. I just, I, it's, is it there? I'm assuming it's gone, no? The well, carriage, the, the carriage is gone, but there's big, yeah, there's big, track marks in the the ground right now anyways until they get uh trampled on by common folk uh leading well, off we, to the northeast we know where we need to go no so perhaps we should um make Elodie and Otten, you can roll history do. checks for me since you're from claire de lune um, that's a 12 12 as well Okay, so you know the basics about Claire de Lune, but you obviously weren't paying very close attention, Otten, when, when your instructors were teaching you about the, the history of this town. You were much more interested in, uh, in other subjects. Uh, but uh, Elodie and Otten, you do know that the, the Forgotten Woods is uh, just that. It's, it's because that's where the old mine is and nobody really goes there anymore. It's just kind of like, this large wooded area on the northeast side of town uh, where occasionally they will go in and, you know, chop down a tree for uh, timber or something, but it's not, it's not the main focus. It's not the city and it's not any of the new mines. It's forgotten. It's been left behind, forgotten uh, in time. But you do know its general location. I mean, you know that it's to the northeast. Uh, Layla, are you gonna start running after the carriage yeah i'm well i mean uh i'm gonna start like heading towards that direction like, okay it, is yeah. there any more horses or carriages around probably not but i'll give you a luck roll <laughs> <laughs> no there is not yeah see. uh there's yeah. there was a two yeah so. there's this this is like i said it's an industrial warehouse area so there are carts but you don't see any horses or mules or anything along those lines. Uh, well, um, I think it is probably best if we make our way as quickly as possible. <laughs> Mayor, it run. is very dangerous for you to go. She wants you dead. Ah, that is um, uh, good. not so good for me, but I am with some very experienced adventurers who will, uh, sure, uh, protect me, and I, as always, I have my LOD here to uh, make sure I am safe. This, this, uh, and yes. the great Kaylee Qatar. <laughs> and this one, she never fails in her confidence of her own ability, so... It is uh, true. I will, I will not do that. But the one making decisions is my commanding officer, Leila Mittins. And it's important that everybody knows and remembers. I have a commander in charge. Look at this. Okay. With my first uh, mate, uh, all that, so we will be okay, I'm sure. She seems... Impressed? Maybe. <laughs> Let us go. Okay. Yeah. So you guys just start making your way northeast up this road. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 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 Layla, because you're 
leading this, uh, go ahead and give me a survival check. Uh, I will say I will say that you're going to get a free advantage on this because they're big ruts in the road where the carriage went. Okay. Okay. Advantage. That is a oh, dirty twenty. Great. So yeah, it's easy. You okay, follow the tracks. Easy. And you also follow the wreckage because as you're going that direction, you notice that there are people that have either barely been trampled and they're kind of recovering or uh, like a, a cart that's been overturned because this carriage bulldozed its way through the rest of the city. But you get mm -hmm. all the way to the outskirts of the city and sure enough, the, uh, the city line ends and you see this massive old growth forest in front of you and all of you have made your way out to the outskirts of the city um the the forest itself is much much older than the city is and so you can actually see almost like a uh um a line a tree line of where they've hacked away at the forest to uh to build the city uh, and there's some clear cutting, but there's also some, you know, selective uh, cutting as well, where they've hacked away a bunch of trees to build all of the beautiful structures in Claire de Lune that have, you know, boomed up over the last 100 years. But the um, carriage tracks continue on this road out into the forest. Before we go any further. Oh, and by the way, mm. the sun has set. It is now nighttime. Uh, and the moon be... is full. Ooh, uh, I will. I will turn into a, a third visage of a slightly larger uh, man, uh, a bit of a gruffer-looking man. Um, there, this is Jean. Uh, Jean will turn around and go. Um, okay. Before we go any further, does anyone need uh, any uh, healing? Is everyone uh, okay in that respect? Excuse me, sir. Who are you? Oh my word. Saw that <laughs> they did warn me. They did warn me. Uh, it's bits. It's um. Look, you just call me CC, okay? No matter what I look like, just call me CC. It is, is confusing, that... you see, because uh, you look like people different. How do I know? Is there can some turn... identifying thing that I'm I can? I'm gonna turn into Otten. <laughs> ah! Ah! Oh, obviously, ah! very handsome. <laughs> Whoa, that is kind of weird. I, I reach back out to touch Sean. my own face. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no. Okay. Okay. Jeez. No. Okay. No. No touching, please. Thank you. I'll turn <laughs> back into Jean. <laughs> it's like a mirror. That was my favorite. I was not allowed to play with anybody as a child. I just had myself in the mirror. So uh, we were friends. You know, oh. it was nostalgic for that. So does anyone need any healing? <laughs> uh, I am I am slightly wounded from my duel. If anyone is able to help, that would be much appreciated so that I'm fresh for the next battle. Sure, I'll go ahead and give uh, Kaylee a healing word. I'll just do a first Great. level if that's okay. Uh, Kaylee, sure. it won't help a whole lot, but it might help a little bit. Oh, yeah. well, that's a nine. Uh, nine points of healing. That's not too bad. So, no, not too bad at all. Level one. <sighs> yeah, that brings me up to full, so that's great. Great. Nice. Um, I have not been injured. Good. Good for you. Thank good you. For you. Uh, what is our plan going in for this thing? I'm, I've got a bit of an idea, but I'd, I'd love to run it by the group. Um, right. Well, given the fact that the uh, that the lady needs um, Marguerite, she needs this crystal. She needs uh, this sapphire. Apologies. Um, maybe it would be a wise idea if we could somehow, uh, the four of us, and I'll gesture to uh, Otten, Kaylee, and um, uh, uh, and Elodie, and say could uh, draw their attention somehow, and we let uh, our little sneak thief here go and steal the gem. If they don't have it, then they can't use it. Oh. This is what I do, by the way. I'm Jean, uh, well, I was Jean, I'm sort of a, the tactician of the group. Uh, pleasure to meet you all properly. Um, oh yes, I like this plan, and causing a distraction should be no problem with nature's spotlight upon us. As I look up at the full moon. <laughs> wow. Okay. Well, um, I could play the part of the uh, mayor again, uh, as much as we're not particularly thrilled about doing that. He's, oh, it's, uh, 
taxing. Um, but uh, would, would it, anyone be able to provide me with any sort of um, protection? <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm not the uh, sturdiest uh, uh, of fellows. Um, well, I would gladly walk in front of you. Well, I feel kind of bad about that. It feels like I'm sort of taking advantage uh, a little there. Um, but sure. <laughs> uh, that's what I am for. I have a sword. I have this Jamil, and mm -hmm. uh, I am happy to walk in front of you. I should okay. do it anyway, as a leader. True, true. Absolutely. I'm sending the poor boy to his death. My word. Um, what was that? <laughs> nothing. Uh, this is a good plan. <laughs> I think for it. But that's for my, my talisman that I gave to Kili could be of use to you now. I believe it will work one more time. Uh, yeah, yes. W what was this? If you wouldn't mind, uh, Kili, uh, this talisman will allow you to... Um, uh, it gives you a bit of luck, you know. It makes you be able to do things a bit better. Ah, well, mm -hmm. thank you very much. Uh, perhaps Otten should take that. However, I, I, oh. I have a bit of I have a bit of uh, fortune uh, on my side as it is. But maybe uh, for 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 Otten there would be good yes? and help my conscience a little uh, before we try this. <clears throat> All right, what is it? A necklace? Ah, oh, Otten, catch! Oh, and I'm just gonna. <laughs> okay. Uh. Hold on, I... it is fallen in the leaves. I will oh, get it. Oh, no, it's I a will... very, uh, oh, very boy. fragile uh, from my <laughs> patron. Uh, it's a bit very exp expensive to fix. That's fine. Hey. Just, pick, just pick it up. I have found it. Oh. It's okay. It's just a... <laughs> it's a little dusty. It's okay. <laughs> yes, um, <laughs> Kaylee and uh, Elodie, do you think you should be a part of the distraction? Or would you perhaps want to help uh, Miss Mittens? grabbing the gem. I mean, I don't. They, there might only be one entrance and exit to this place, so I'm assuming we're going to have to sort of jump in there, make a big distraction so that, you know, uh, so if you're good at sneaking, then maybe you could help Mittens or you can come with us. And... Uh, my particular uh, skill set is mostly for uh, bookkeeping and assisting the mayor, but I do have some ability to um, create illusory uh, images that can <laughs> help, so. That could be uh, very useful. I, uh, you can consider me your jack of all trades, if you will. I am happy to help sneak and am quite proficient in that, if I do say so myself. However, I do believe that I also cause an excellent distraction. Um, right. Do you think you'd need uh, uh, any assistance in this, Layla, Mittens? Uh, or do you I, prefer to work alone uh, when you steal things? Oh, I, I... I would much rather steal this one on my own. Ah. Makes perfect sense. Then um, my brand new red shiny hat is off to you, Layla. Best of luck. Thank you. I quite like uh, the idea of a giant sapphire. And then just before we go ahead and head in, uh, this is concentration, so feel free to uh, kind of keep me true on this one, uh, sure. DM. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and uh, take out, let me just double check, where am I? Yes, uh, I'm actually going to take out, uh, I'm actually, in fact, I'm going to pluck a little uh, hair from Layla Mittens, but like, sorry! <laughs> um, but as I do, I throw the hair up into the air, it begins to glow, uh, and I I cast Cat's Grace uh, on um, Layla Mittens. So for the next hour, you have advantage on dex checks, um, which includes like sleight of hand and stealth. Uh, and you also don't take falling damage uh, if it's less than 20 feet uh, okay. or 20 feet or less. Uh, you don't take any falling damage because you land like a the cat that you are. Yes. <laughs> Beautiful. Uh, so are you all making your way into the woods? Mm-hmm. Okay, so, uh, exactly. So you make your way down this road and the road starts to taper down and get more rough uh, to the point to where there's now no cobblestone whatsoever. It's just a dirt road. And uh, there's uh, roots that have started to kind of pop up out of the, the road. And you could see that it would be incredibly hard to navigate your way down this road in a cart uh, um, unless you have a lot of light uh, and you know what you're doing or uh, you don't care about the damage that's inflicted on your cart. And sure enough, uh, you don't even have to go too far into the woods before you find this 
broken uh, wheel, as if part of the cart had broken off uh, due to the damage it's it's incurred racing down this road. And you notice some roots uh, and stones that have been kicked up out of place. And the uh, tracks for the cart meander off the road into the woods themselves. Hmm. I have found something. It is a it, wheel. It's very obvious. <laughs> <laughs> it is a wheel. Everybody look. Excellent Come close. work. Excellent work. Thank you. Fantastic. Uh, at this point, Jared, I'm going to cast Divine Sense. Okay. Uh, just to see if there's anything within 60 feet of us. Right. That's Celestial Fiend, Fiend or... Undead. Or Fey, right? Or Fey. Yeah. So you do get a ping on the Fey. And... Just as you do the d- divine sense, uh, and LOD, you sense this a little bit as well. You feel a presence that you haven't felt in a, a very long time, LOD, which is a another fey creature because you've been inside the city for so long. Um, but Otten, you sense uh, um, a minor ping uh, on the on the fey side of things as well. And just as you send out that that sense. Uh, you notice off to the side, not too far from where the wagon wheel was, there's uh, a grouping of mushrooms that starts to move and uh, and wiggle and shuffle a little bit. And it starts to right itself up and you can see this little creature erect itself up out of the detrius on the ground uh, covered in pine needles and little bits of moss. Uh, its head looks like a mushroom cap. Um, and it's not very tall. It's uh, even smaller than Elodie. It's only a couple feet tall. Um, and its mouth starts to uh, wiggle. And you notice that the mouth itself is actually made out of two caterpillars that are uh, scrunching cool. together. Um, and it looks up at you, Elodie and Otten, when you sense it, and it bows and then begins to speak. Oh, uh, very funny, Fitz. Very funny, Fitz. No, no, I think uh, this is... I'm right here. Oh, uh, well, you know, I'm wrong, but it's fine. Go on. M- mistress of the Fae, uh, she has sent me out here to, um, to welcome you. And she wants to speak with you. And he's looking at you, Elodie. Oh, oh, right, right now, in with well, all all of these people here. Uh, well, oh. uh, there's there's a fairy ring not too far into the woods, and I I was I was sent to lead you over there so that oh. you could talk. Oh, okay, um, yes, yes, we let's go. All right, yeah. and he just starts leading and and you notice instead of walking it's almost like he's uh hovering um off of the detrius in the woods itself he's just kind of sliding or gliding along uh the forest floor as elodie walks and follows him she's kind of straightening up her her outfit and smoothing her hair Uh, it's just so embarrassing to be seen Uh, seen in this body my god uh, Elodie, uh, are, are you, um, who is this lady of the phase? Uh, wh- uh, just, um, uh, Queen Mab, uh, just, uh, she's, uh, it's a long story, but, um... Is it safe? Are you safe? I was safe. What's your definition of safe? Like, uh, will you come back to us so that we can continue with the mission that we're on? Uh, that is, uh, difficult to say. Uh, my encounter with Queen Mab last uh, has, uh, in fact, put me in these bodies. So, uh, would you consider this safe? I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, right. Okay. Well, you uh, you can all come if you want. Mm-mm, 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 mm-mm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I have to kind of agree with Miss Mittens on this uh, mm-mm feeling that uh, I'm getting swelling you know, up inside I, me. But, but uh, as far as I know, I'm the only person who has been, uh, this has been done to. So I think it's very statistically unlikely that the same thing will happen to you. 
I have <laughs> never seen a creature such as this. This is the greatest day of my life, and I would love to accompany you. Mm hmm. <sighs> Okay. Well, how long, roughly, uh, my good, my good mushroom man, is this likely to take? Well, uh, that's that's up to Queen Mab. She's kind of in charge here. I'm just her servant. Are we able to tell her we're on a bit of a schedule, like a bit of a tight schedule? Is that okay? No, no, um, not typically. I can pass the message along. Do it in a very polite and pleasant way, like I would do. <laughs> All right. Uh, what I would say is, if uh, you want to encounter Queen Mab, just uh, speak softly and do try not to make eye contact. Uh, oh, oh, okay. I am you... not great at either of those things, but I will try. Yeah, she just has a lot of power in her eyeballs. Uh, Otten, you are staying with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> there is uh, yes. that is not happening. There is no way we're putting you in that situation because it will go badly. I know but it will. Cici, Cici, I, I know you are the great tactician of our group. What if all of this is intertwined? What if it is all one grand quest for us? To get turned into creepy dolls? <laughs> Aye. Uh, Hell no. I take a uh, no, I, no, I, I no, wouldn't no, recommend no. keeping her waiting. She She's not very patient. Okay, well, look, in for a penny, I guess. Come on, Otten, stay in the back. <laughs> oh, as you will. I will I'm protect the back. the back with all my life. So, I am okay. in the back. I'll, 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 so as a side to Layla, just go, I'll, as a side to Layla, just go, maybe you should be stealthy now. Okay. Okay. Stealthy. <laughs> so, go ahead and give me a stealth check. With advantage. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, the rest of you are following this mound of detrius, uh, as it... Ooh, nat me 20. Beautiful. Uh, yeah, you disappear. You're, yeah, you're, you're a shadow. Uh, you follow this Detrius uh, quite a ways, and then uh, you get to an area that's kind of uh, open, and you notice that there's a ring of mushrooms surrounding what appears to be an old stone uh, uh, silo uh, or, or storage area that's so old that it looks like it's co uh, collapsed off to one side, uh, and it's open. Um, and the, the moon is casting uh, a light down into this area and the mushrooms are glowing ever so slightly. Uh, and just as you get to that ring of mushrooms, the detrius creature uh, stops for a moment and then looks around and then carefully steps over the top of the mushroom circle as much as it can. It kind of like flops over the top of the mushroom circle and goes straight for that broken down stone silo. Uh, she said to meet her here. Okay. Are these friends of yours that you're avoiding stepping on? Uh, well, that's the ring. Uh, you don't want to touch it because it'll hurt you. Oh, it's yes. a it's a protective ring. It's a ward. But you you've been invited, so you should be fine. I think. I, yes, yes, yes. I should know this. I used to live here. Uh, so I forgot all my fairy things. Uh, so you easily flutter over the top because you can fly. What are the rest of you doing? Uh, I'll uh, just observe. Um, <laughs> I'm are you Katie. stepping? <laughs> are you stepping into the ring or no? I, I, I think I can see from outside the ring. Can yes, I, you can. Yeah, I've got a good eyeball from here. <laughs> no, uh, no, please proceed. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so the only person that's going into the ring right now is Elodie. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'm going to uh, do a, a a front handspring into the ring, or attempt Beautiful. to do a front handspring into yeah. the ring. <laughs> Roll uh, acrobatics. It's a pretty simple check. It's not like these mushrooms are ten feet tall or anything. That's a, uh, a 14? Yeah, that'll do it. Okay. Yeah, you gracefully flip over the top of these mushrooms into the center of the ring. And almost as soon as you get into this ring, it, it feels like a different world. Like the wind was blowing from one direction and the, the grass in this area is, is flowing in a different direction. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Like you feel the breeze one direction, but then you look down and for whatever reason, the grass is going against that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and a, maybe even a leaf tumbles by, but as soon as it hits the ground, it gets scraped the opposite direction along the ground. Uh, and you can just feel this um, magic in the air. Uh, and those of you that are inside of the circle immediately start to notice little glowing balls of light 
appearing throughout the forest outside of the ring of mushrooms. Those of you outside of the ring don't see any of this. However, you can all give me perception checks. Uh, 15. Okay. 21. 14. Okay. Uh, even Otten, all three of you, even Otten, <laughs> can hear rustling sounds in the woods. And when I'm saying rustling, I'm saying like you can hear twigs snap, uh, leaves blow about. Um, and uh, who got the 20 something? Me. You audibly hear at one point hissing sounds, very faint, but you do hear them. I can hear hissing. Uh, uh, Otten? Yes. I think there's something in the woods with us. Perhaps a snake with legs and a mm. carriage? I'm actually starting to think that maybe going inside of that circle is the best thing to do, which is truly horrible. It's a real rock and a hard place situation. Maeve is going crazy in my head telling me what a fool I am for even going down this path. Uh, we, we either hide, I think, or we go inside that ri ring of mushrooms. What do you, what would you suggest, Arden, as the commander of the group? Uh, well, as a commander of the group, I, uh, one, I often refer to my first officer, who is... Uh, Super hidden right now, so we can't, can't, know, where we can't, can't I don't know where uh, she it's is. Like a uh, of smoke, I don't know how she does it. It's kind of impressive. She's uh, yeah. impressive and also uh, concerning as a commander mm. who does not know where their first officer is. But, um, okay, you can go in the circle and I can stay out here and protect the circle. I don't feel good about that. Okay, we could put one foot in the circle and see what happens. And get ready to jump out if it's Leda, bad. something slithers over your foot. <laughs> I'm in the circle. Yeah, <laughs> in the like circle. Crying. As soon as I hear this, <laughs> cat saw the cucumber. <laughs> yeah, no. Okay. Yeah, I guess we are going in the circle. Everyone in the there. circle. In the circle. Otten no, no, no. turns around, and you guys are both gone inside of the circle. <laughs> no, I'll definitely be. I'll definitely be grabbing on like, <laughs> by the plate no. mail. Come on. <laughs> So you're all inside the circle, and uh -huh. as soon as you get in, again, these lights are popping up left and right. We can go to the map room real quick. Uh -oh. The lights start to pour into the circle itself and surround the area that you guys are in, which is this, again, this silo. And the little mushroom creature uh, is standing next to Elodie. Uh, she, uh, she's coming. She'll be here any minute now. And as the lights continue to uh, circle around you, um, uh, Elodie, you would be the only one that has even a snowball's chance of knowing what these things are. Go ahead and give me a nature check. Okay. Uh, nature, 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 14. So you are a fairy, or you were a fairy, and you spent quite a few times around, uh, around other fae creatures everything from sprites to, uh, you know, um, and, and all kinds of fake creatures. These are pixies, uh, and they're a very specific type of pixie. It's, a, it's what's known as a, uh, a swarm of pixies. Um, and they're very tiny little balls of light, but you know that they are actually uh, tiny fey creatures. And seeing a pixie one pixie at a time, not that big of a deal, but seeing a swarm of pixies, there is a lot of latent magical energy trapped in this swarm. Um, the rest of you just see twinkling lights. Uh, as oh, you're wow, staring... it's so beautiful. <laughs> Don't touch it, Otten, do not touch it. But I want to. No. <laughs> okay, I will respect you, but I am in charge still. Yes, as you I... are oh, just watching advice. these lights twinkle around just... you, a woman uh, steps out of the shadow, and she's massive. She's easily 10 feet tall, uh, big flowing uh, um, dress with a um, gossamer uh, uh, headdress coming up off of her shoulders. Um, it, it's almost as if uh, 
a giant stepped out from the shadow, but without making a sound. All you hear is that, that breeze, that slight, and maybe a little bit of humming coming from the twinkling lights. Uh, her hair constantly changes color. Her skin tone constantly changes color. Her dress, which is gossamer, constantly changes color. All different shades of, of pastel to earth tones. Uh, it's a kaleidoscope. Um, and as she steps forward, you realize that her feet are not touching the ground at all either. And she looks directly at you, Elodie, and the little detrius mushroom creature bows deeply uh, as soon as she appears. Elodie Vakersi. I bow and uh, force uh, <laughs> I force Otten's head down and I'm just whisper, do not look her in the eye, Otten. It's too late. Otten's no. already Otten's no. already yeah. just completely <laughs> entranced <laughs> by her. Um, and when she speaks, it sounds as if three sets of vocal cords all on different pitches speak at the same time. Hello. Hello. It has been a while, my child. How, um, how may I uh, assist you today, lady? You know what I want. You can sense it. And if you let that vile, wretched, dead god return i will be very disappointed and when she says that all of the light and all of the color drains from her and she's just this uh negative image almost as if the opposite of color like a monochromatic black and white uh being and then the color slowly starts to fade back into her it drains it reverse drains back into her her face her skin her hair the headdress we are uh, we are hunting the serpent right now uh, to try to locate the sapphire we are working as quickly as we can who are these creatures you surround yourself with uh, they are a group of multi-talented uh, very uh, brave and uh, intelligent uh, individuals who uh, are very useful for this particular mission. She stares through each of you. And when I mean stares through you, it's as if she's looking at your soul and not looking at your physical being. I feel and like it makes, for the first time makes you feel times. quite naked. Yeah, I feel like for the first time in a long time, Cece feels like four different people. Just, <laughs> oh, ah, I don't know who we are. What's going on? <laughs> Very Hi. interesting. Will they work alongside you? Or will they betray you? I wonder. Uh, uh, as you know, not omniscient as you are, so I do not know if they will betray me, but I do believe that they will help me find the sapphire, and I possess the power that it takes to uh, securely sapphire and bring it to you. Bring it to me, and I will reward you. Oh, please. Oh, please, she falls to her knees. I, please, I just want my body back. I do it. This is a beautiful body. It's, 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 it, everything works, but... I just, I feel like I want to be, want to be beautiful again. <laughs> you don't think you're beautiful? I just, uh, not this, not this, uh, your, 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 your gift is very beautiful, yes, but I uh, just, I do not feel like myself. I wove you from a birch tree. That tree was over 500 years old and you spit in my face. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Désolé, je suis désolé, she, 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 she bows. I, if, if I may, she, she, uh, poor Elodie has had a very, um, a very difficult day um, trying to uh, ensure the safety and security of the 
of the uh, sapphire and has given much to the to the um, to the town and their their mayor and uh, and, and all uh, speaking um, very highly of, of your gifts and if she misspeaks it is merely a, a, a miscommunication uh, um, I can would love to vouch for my my dear friend Elodie that she means no offense by this what is your name creature <laughs> uh, to Cece <laughs> pleasure we, we, we have a few names technically if you well, uh, if that would please are you a gnome and when she says that, you switch to Fitz. Uh, <laughs> or are you something else? And you switch Ooh. to your dragonborn. Oh. <clears throat> Which <laughs> one are you truly? I wonder. Well, that's kind of hard to answer. <laughs> We're kind of all of them. <laughs> we, we, there was, we, um, were too blessed by some arcane uh, um, uh, happenstance, and we were merged uh, into this um, cr creature that you now see before you. Um, we uh, uh, have no true face. We try to be as democratic as possible and share the time <laughs> as not to hog the limelight, as it were. Which one do you want to be? Uh, like, like, do you mean permanently? Yes. Or do you <laughs> desire to be all at the same time? Roll me a constitution save. Oh, so I knew roping my damn mouth was a bad thing to do. <laughs> oh. I have, I, I cannot, I have rolled well as an 18 plus one. That's a 19. Okay. Ooh. So for a moment, all four of your beings merge together into one horrific creature, just for a moment. And you feel all of them at the same time and all of those personalities at the same time. And then you immediately merge back into uh, the form you just were. <sighs> okay, okay. Well, I'm very sorry. I will, I will be silent now. Perhaps. <laughs> You will be my next disciple. If she fails me, I choose you. God damn it, Fitz. <laughs> okay, sure. What sure. are the rest of you doing? Keeping my damn mouth shut. <laughs> oh, 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 I recommend that. I recommend that. <laughs> I'm so, Kaylee, quite uh, perplexed, yeah? No, yeah, of course, of course. So I don't think I'm just, I think I'm just, like, I'm, like, staring, like, the kind of stare where a parent needs to be like, it's rude to stare like that. Like, Sure. Yeah, you're totally, I mean, you're definitely yeah. enamored by her. Yeah. She's she's beautiful. Uh, yeah. And and it's just, like, aw, you're awestruck. Um, so, uh, Layla, give me a, those of you that are not awestruck, so I'm saying Layla and Kaylee, give me perception checks. Okay, yeah, Kaylee from the from her entrance has just bowed as deeply into like a one leg side lunge as she can right. to show as much respect as possible, even though from right. like the feet that she can see, she's already in love. But she remembered right. not to look in the eyes. Good. Seven. No, okay. Uh twelve. Okay. So neither of you can see it, but you can audibly hear hissing sounds beyond the fluttering, beyond her talking. You can hear these hissing sounds. Uh, you can't tell where they're coming from. It's just kind of like ambient noise, okay? Mm -hmm. On top of everything else that's happening. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, Queen Mab, or at least the avatar that she is currently uh, assuming, turns back to you, Elodie. I'll ask you one more time. Please retrieve the gem, return it to me, and I'll give you one wish. Whatever it is you want is yours. Yes, your majesty. We, your majesty. Is that not benevolent of me? It is, it is. 
too, too kind. Yes. I figure I'm already sort of in this now. Uh, so, just out of pure curiosity, <laughs> what is it that you want with this uh, large gem? Uh, just uh, to call it research. Uh, I like to extra motivation for me, you know, because whatever it is, I'm down. Whatever it is, I'm so there for it. I'm just, you know, would be interested. To Roll know. persuasion. <laughs> I was kind of hoping you'd say that. Uh, that is a dirty twenty. Okay. Uh, so you uh, you wield the one weapon that your character is very very adept at using, which is your silver tongue. You ask her this, and she looks at you mildly amused. I'll tell you. I want to use it to physically be in this realm for as long as I desire. You see, I'm only partially here. I live in the Feywild. And what power you would have, I'm assuming, given you just made a mess of me and, uh, well, you're only partially here. Uh, truly, you are a magnificent creature. <laughs> I tell you what. Bring me the gem, mm -hmm. and I'll give each of you one wish. I accept. Let's go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's do this. <laughs> she smiles. Just so you know, the servants of Scylla are here. Is there anything you can do to help us with uh, negotiating our way out of this little... Uh, so I suggest mm -hmm. you moved swiftly. And as she says that, she fades back into the shadows. The mm -hmm. lights twinkle and blink and go out. And the, the glow of the mushrooms dies down and you can see serpents start to crawl mm -hmm. over the top of the mushrooms. All different kinds of snakes poisonous snakes, constrictor snakes, every snake that you can possibly imagine. There's asps, cobras, vipers, death adders, pythons, boas, <laughs> all slowly creeping over the top of the mushrooms into this circle now that she's left. And okay. you are only able to see this because of the light of the moon and those of you that have dark vision. Cool. Jared, I just so, want to say real quick, this is my literal worst nightmare. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's like terrified of snakes. Um, mm. So um, uh, I'm going to like yeet myself up into a tree. Yeah. Okay. Like immediately, like now, out. <laughs> like, <Okay>. out. <laughs> you are going to have to run and leap out of the mushroom circle to get to a tree because this mm -hmm. is a clearing, but you can certainly mm -hmm. do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, what are the rest of you doing? Uh, she obviously can scale a tree, no problem. Um, Are they circle, circling hundreds, around us? Hundreds, hundreds of snakes. No, from the direction that you heard the hissing, well, your character didn't hear it, but from the direction that they heard the hissing, there's this wave of snakes crawling up over the top from the south. You guys moved from the south to the north. You veered off to the northwest. They're coming from where you were, from where the cart and the road was. Can I, can I, uh, I have a, um, hmm. no, I was just trying to think if there's any way of like making a fire or something, uh, to try and, <laughs> you're gone, you left, you left no, us. No, but I'm just in a tree, I'm just above, I can do it. Has anyone got fire? Can anyone like, I don't think snakes like fire. <laughs> Potion of fire breathing! <laughs> oh, oh, damn. Uh, so you you say, does anyone have fire? And Layla, who's up in a tree, goes, mm, 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 and points at herself. Me. Uh, me. Uh, well, if you could assist, that'd be fantastic. We're all going to get eaten by poisonous snakes. OK, cool. Um, I take a, a charge of my uh, potion of fire, sort of like leap sure. out of the tree, landing sure. facing towards the south, and like sure. just blast a bunch of fire breathing out. Great. So these snakes, and granted, very few of these snakes are indigenous to this area. Not that any of you care because none of you are like, you know, druids or rangers. Um, but these snakes uh, seem to be drawn to something, almost like they're hypnotized. And when you blow this gout of flame out in front of them, 
most of them don't seem phased by it. They almost, they crawl into it and some of them combust and burn and die. Others snap out of their, their hypnotized state for a second and you can tell that they're, they're snakes, so they panic and some of them even bite one another or hiss and rear up. Um, but that that gives you just enough time to run. Okay. And the five of you and Elodie who can fly start to run away from this mm -hmm. creepy crawling wave. And you're blindly running through the woods at this point, not really knowing exactly which direction you need to go. Elodie, however, I will give you, um, I'll give you perception. Give me a perception roll. Okay. Because you can fly. Uh, 13? Uh, you hover up a little bit amongst the trees and you notice uh, far, far in the distance, there is a, uh, uh, a light, a fire of some sort that's, that's burning. And it's not a big fire. It looks like it isn't much more than uh, a couple of torches, but you do see that. Ahead, I see fire, let's go. So you scream this as the rest of you continue to run that direction. And behind you, if you take the time to look, <laughs> okay, you just I hear, do. you hear, <laughs> you hear the rustling of the leaves and amongst the shadows, you just see this wave of serpents slithering over the top of tree and shrub and, and bush through the grass. Um, as you're running, you get to another clearing. You are in, uh, in uh, we can go to the map. Uh, Sean, you wanna be on the south side of the map. Uh, you are in a area that actually has ancient old cobblestone. It looks like these bricks were laid by hand a long time ago and they're mud bricks. They're not uh, um, stone. They look like they were made from uh, compact uh, clay that were mixed together and then baked. Um, and you have a, uh, a small stream uh, flowing up from the south that you kind of followed and you cross over a tiny uh, clay and mud bridge. Thank you, Sean. As you get into this area, it feels different than the other part of the woods. This feels even older than the area you were just in. And the fairy ring is quite old. Um, and you notice some stone ruins in front of you and all of you audibly hear chanting. And that's coming from up on top of a rise where you see a few torches lit a pond and there's four, four, I think it's four, uh, four robed figures, five robed figures, um, uh, chanting, uh, in front of this stone, uh, sculpture or altar, uh, and the, uh, water that you see in the map is actually pouring out from the mine itself, creating the uh, stream that you're down by. Perfect. Thanks, Sean. So you see that happening up on top of that raised area and between you and that raised area is quite a distance and you notice snakes start to trickle in from both sides. And there's even a couple snakes that come up out of the ground themselves. And they're just sort of um, panning around, looking for something. Um, Layla, I think this might be the time for you to- um, Dumb. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm I, I, to wish I, I was with at that party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm gonna- I'm The gonna chanting starts to get louder. Uh, I think that we should, there's, there's the potential that we just try and go guns blazing here because we, we, there's no way we're going to get past the snakes without them seeing us. Would you I like this plan. Yes, I love your style. I know another way. I go right into battle. 
I am not afraid. Maybe okay. if we sort of shout from here and get their attention, we might be able to uh, uh, get them to call the snakes off so we could approach at least. Uh, well, all of you can make uh, perception checks, except for Layla, because she's going to disappear off into the woods. Ooh, uh, I'll say to Layla 20. before Layla leaves, I'll be like, I think there's a ridge up behind them. Uh, it looks like there's a ridge. Maybe you could be up there and then yeah, I'm gonna uh, stealth and get up. So, Layla, I'm going to, for now, I'm just going to kind of slide your character off into the woods over here. Cool, nice shot. Uh, and I'll, give you, I'll have you give me a stealth check. Sure. Uh, there was a natural 20, I heard, out there uh, from the... Otten. Otten okay. shockingly got a nat 20. Wow, that is shocking. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, Otten, you see one of the robed figures hold up an object that is glowing blue, <gasps> and there's a blue aura emanating off of it and off of the robed figure, and they're placing the blue shiny object, the aura, onto this into the mouth of this stone statue and then backing away. And as soon as they start to back away, you notice that the stone of the statue starts to crumble and break apart. What are, oh, what are you four doing? No. Oh, uh, Fitz, CC, CC, uh, it is there. It's just, yes, I think we should just go. I think whatever's happening is, is happening right I now. I think it's time to go. Yes, let's do it. Yes. Okay. Uh, Elodie, so you, can, you can fly above the snakes. Yes, you're okay. Uh, we, yes. Okay, then everyone else behind me, let's go. Uh, okay. I will uh, be as the mayor. <laughs> Just if nothing else, I think it'd be funny. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let us so, do this, huh? <laughs> okay. So uh, you guys can go ahead and move your tokens. Uh, we don't need to roll initiative yet, but I'd like to know which path you are choosing Ooh. to to take. Excuse and, me, before you Layla, leave, go my ahead three and give friends, me that I want check. to bless you. 28. Oh, this is my, I'm supposed to get better at this as a paladin. 28? 28, I rolled a Dang. 19. Dang. And I got plus nine to stealth. All right. Holy cow. <laughs> you disappear into the shadows yeah. once again. I will say this, because you rolled so well, nobody knows where you're at. Not even your friends. Like you wow. are, you are gone. Oh. You're in another realm. <laughs> um, T- tabaxi rogues at that right yeah tabaxi rogues yeah. are the best <laughs> all right so uh lod you take off and you fly above the the river just like that what about the rest of you go ahead and uh move your i move guess your i should tickets. dash huh yeah i'll head i'll be heading this direction i guess keeping close to the river okay. as a potential point to bail it <laughs> If that okay. looks better than being on land. Okay. Yeah. So, Kaylee, when you get to there, are you trying to be stealthy or are you just bolting? I am just going for it uh, okay. and hoping that everyone else kind of stays pseudo sure. behind me for protection, sure. like the front wall. So you get to there and there's an adder that's kind of perked up on one of the, the uh, rock outcroppings there. And mm-hmm. it's just sort of panning back and forth. And when you start to run by it, its head just snaps towards you and it starts hissing. All of the snakes in that area all begin to hiss in unison and the chanting gets louder. Let's go, let's go. Go Go ahead and move your tokens again. And after you move your full movement this time, we will then roll initiative. Okay. The statue crumbles and revealing itself from underneath the statue is this. Ooh, Snapdragon. There is a, there is, uh, a series of bones that protrude from the stone statue and a large serpentine skull that has the gem in its mouth and it starts to uh, glow with this pulp, purple aura. Uh, I would like to retract and... my earlier statement. This <laughs> is my night. <laughs> and the uh, cloaked figures around it uh, all start to uh, sway back and forth. And as they sway back and forth, they shrink in size the cloaks and robes drop off of them 
and each of them turns into a snake themselves. Oh my god. You even see Lady Marguerite yep. one last moment as she she is uh, transformed into a serpent. Snake uh, And in fact, uh, Sir Andrew Aguecheek is there and he also gets transformed into a snake. Oh, my lover. Does he look, uh, does he look like he's doing that of his own volition? <laughs> you don't know. You don't oh. know. Huh. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say that these snakes that are right here are those people. Are we supposed just, to roll initiative, uh, Jared? Yes, yes. I will do it. I really wish we were doing this live and we had advantages. I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh my word! I'm sorry, I'm rolling so well. Uh, Keep going. Tw- Twenty-four. Oh my <laughs> goodness. Twenty-four. Okay. I'm I'm assuming that's probably the highest, right? Mm. For what? Got a dirty 24. twenty. Did anyone? Oh, twenty-four miss? is the highest. Yeah. Okay, so twenty-four is fits. Okay, who's next? Uh, Jess said you got a dirty twenty. Dirty twenty. 20. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Uh, Elodie. Who's next after 20? Uh, I have a 17. Perfect. Do you want me to roll? Uh, yes, because you're uh, sneaking up around across the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a 14. I got a okay. Uh, What is your dex modifier? Me? Yeah, Otten. Uh, one. Okay. And uh, Layla, what, what did you get? I got a 16. 16. Okay, so yeah. 16 is Layla... 17. Who is the 17? Sorry. That's Kaylee. Kaylee, thank you. Uh, and then I'm going to say me and then Otten. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, great. So uh, you guys moved your full movement, right? Yeah, and now we're, now we're going to go into initiative. Great. Mm-hmm. Uh, just for those people... Uh, that remember uh, when I said um, I was going to upgrade the monster? Mm-hmm. Um, this is what the monster was going to be right here. You oh, can see that. Thank had, goodness. Had Force of Evil won, it would have been a full spirit naga. And mm-hmm. because Force of Good won, you guys got to level up and you're fighting a bone naga. Wow. Ooh, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Force of Good. <laughs> mm. Okay. Mm. Fitz. Can, you, can you check the chat? Yeah, sure. Fitz, you're up. Yeah, okay, great. I am going to use my movement to get up to, I think I can get up to here with 30 feet. Um, do I have like a line of sight on these snakes now? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool. 5, 10, 15, 20, 30. Okay, so I'm about 40 feet away from that creature. I'm going to... Uh, I might save that. Um, uh, I'm gonna... I would use I would use the big guns, whatever that may be. I would use it now. <laughs> sure thing. I'm gonna go ahead and um, I, I I start speaking, muttering under my breath, um, and I'm gonna cast dissonant whispers. Uh, right. So I'm gonna need this thing uh, to make me a wisdom saving throw, please. Wisdom saving throw. I got a nineteen. <laughs> of course you did. On a failed save, it takes you still take three d six. So that okay. is three seven. Ooh, okay, thirteen points of damage, uh, of psychic damage. Okay. Um, so yes. So you did. You did thirteen. I take half of that, or I take. I take thirteen. Uh, hold on. Let me. Sorry. Yes. Let me double check. That's correct. Uh, uh, oh yes, you sorry. You take half as much, and you don't. Yeah, you don't have the effect. Okay, yeah. so we'll just round it up. So seven and a half. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, uh, so and... you reach your mind out to this thing and uh, and uh, whisper these uh, words at this creature, and back inside of your own mind, uh, you hear a, a th- it sounds like a voice that's uh, that's being created by a thousand snakes hissing in unison. Horrible. And it comes right back at you. 
No one can stop me now. That's what you hear in your head. Mm, okay, cool. I'm going to bonus action uh, give up. Uh, <laughs> next, that's my turn. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Uh, and that's Fitz, so Elodie. Uh, okay, so Elodie is going to fly forward. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So these snakes, I'm above this snake, I guess, at this point. Yeah, if you're flying, you don't have anything to worry about. Okay. I'm going to use Phase Strike against the Bone Boy, and oh, uh, this is uh, this is mine. This is just mine, Spike. Um, so roll ah. me a Wisdom saving throw uh, against 15. Okay. Wow, I'm rolling gangbusters. I got a 19. No. Okay. Well, you'll still yeah. take half of my um, uh, 12 psychic damage. So six. Okay. Again, yes. you blast this thing with psychic damage, and Elodie, you hear back in your own mind, Scylla has returned. Oh. And the the gem inside of this serpent stone, sorry, bone serpent's mouth begins to glow, and you can feel negative energy start to being focused into the gem itself. Uh, anything else, Elodie? Nope. Okay. Kaylee. Okay. Um, I am going to uh, do a flip to land up here on this ledge. Okay. Give me an acrobatics um, check. Yep. Because uh, that's ac- quite quite a distance to get up there. It's a 13. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to say... Unfortunately, that's going to require either your bonus action or your action to get up there just because you try to flip and it's wet and you slip a little bit and then you have to clamber up the rest of the way. So feel, okay. feel free. You already used your your movement or most of your movement, but feel free to mark off either your bonus action or your action to achieve that. In other I'll words. use bonus action. I figured. Okay. So you still have your action. Do I have a clean shot at where the sapphire is in the mouth of the thing? It would be a very tough shot. I mean, you would be trying to hit something this size. Yeah, I'm gonna go for it with my short bow. Okay. It I dig it. I uh, shoot. If I can do it. You'll be shooting at disadvantage because it does have cover from the skull that's encasing the gem. Okay, here we go. Uh, with disadvantage, that's a 14. I don't think that's enough. Uh, it is not. AC okay. 15. Stinker. Uh, so what happens is you strike the skull instead of hitting the gem itself. Uh, and the the arrow ricochets off of the skull of this creature. Uh, go ahead and roll damage for that. Okay. That would be... Mm-mm-mm-mm. That is seven points of damage. Okay. Uh, okay. Great. Uh, yeah, you beam this thing in the side of the head, trying to hit the gem and dislodge it, but uh, it doesn't work. Uh, but you do damage it. Great. Uh, it's Kaylee, Layla. So Layla, you have managed to get yourself up and around uh, yeah. to the side. Let me get your. There you are. I'll get you up there, just a sec. Okay. Okay. So you've you've emerged from over here. Yeah. You're coming out of this tree right here and you see a pretty big snake right in front of you who appears to be focused more on the other people of your party that are rushing up these stairs or climbing or flying up towards the bone naga. Okay. Uh, but that is where you're gonna start your turn. Okay. Um, you don't I'm... think you don't think you've been noticed yet. Okay. So I'm gonna take. I'm gonna be stealthy and continue to take the hide action, basically. Okay. And just follow the plan. Okay. And keep trying to get around the back nearer to the thing. 
Okay, so you want to sneak around to its backside, in other words. Yeah, basically, yeah. Okay, so you don't need to beat its perception, but you do need to make a stealth check for just the snakes that are hanging out there. Sure. Uh, and basic snake uh, perception is not that not that good. What about Oh, yeah, you got this. Yeah. Woo. So you managed to <laughs> jump, flip, crawl, uh, twist your way around to right above the ledge, on the ledge yeah. above where the bone naga is at, completely uh-huh. unnoticed by anyone. You don't even think your own party knows that you're there. And you're kind of crouched down on that ledge. What would you like to do? Um, I'm going to hold my action. For what? I'm gonna hold my action for the, so I can see that the gem is inside the big bone nugget's mouth, right? Correct. And it's currently channeling magical energy into it. Into the sapphire. Correct. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold my action until there's like a keen moment where the bone nugget looks like really harmed and distracted. Okay. Um, like, and that's when I'll strike. Okay, so the next time, the next time it takes uh, a, a fair amount of damage. A fair amount of damage. Then, okay. while it's a bit discombobulated, I will. Sure. Go Love it. Love it. Okay. Uh, so that's the Bone Naga's turn, and it's going to turn and look at. Let's see who did the most damage. That would have been Fitz. The Bone Naga Good. turns its head towards you, Fitz. Mm-hmm. Opens its jaw really wide and you can see this crackling energy being pushed through the gem and a blue lightning bolt streaks out of its mouth right at you that's good i'm sure that layla's gonna get the t- <laughs> so you, you get a deck saving throw okay uh okay i'm actually okay not too bad at this let's see that is a nat 20 my dude okay uh, 26. Nice. So you leap out of the way. However, because it is a lightning bolt, you still take uh, yep. half damage. Yep. And um, you kind of uh, face plant on the stairs themselves as this lightning bolt streaks towards you and bounces <laughs> off the wall and still shocks you a little bit. Let me just calculate the damage real quick. Do, 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 do. Taking way too long to calculate damage. You can stop whenever you like, Garrett. Like, <laughs> you don't have to. Just take off those last two Actually rolls. Actually, using well. a dice app to do this. That's just, that's okay, no 37 points of damage, but that's <gasps> divided by two because oh! you made your save. What so the? That's... We're level three. It's a lightning bolt. It's 8d6. I mean, <laughs> why are we fighting? Wow, half two. So, so uh, half of 37, uh, we'll say uh, 15 plus three is 18. Sweet, I would have been toast. In I'm the gym, the, the toast. light drops back down. Uh, oh, Layla, please, if you're going uh, to do something. Do uh, I would say that's your moment, Layla, where uh, you see yeah. the gem is exposed after this lightning bolt shoots please. out. Okay, cool. At this point, right? Yeah. I'm gonna like meow, leap out, like you know that weird thing that cats do, like yes. bend and spin. Yes. And I'm gonna like snatch the the sapphire with my with my with my claws, get it out, and okay. then yeet myself out of there. And okay. and oh, okay, I'm gonna do that. Get grab that. Oh, is that? But that's my action, right? Is grabbing the thing. Yeah, you you would have to jump on top of this thing and uh-huh. then rip the gem out and then try yeah. to jump away. Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. Okay. That's what I'm gonna do, and, I, okay. and I'm also gonna use a lucky point because I you probably to want to at this point. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you well, you, so, can, you can say it after you you know whether it's pass or fail. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, do yeah. acrobatics oh. Oh. and then roll your attack to try to cool. snatch the gem out of this thing's mouth. Okay, cool. Uh, I'm doing acrobatics with advantage. That's as well, with advantage. Yeah. Yeah. yeah thank yeah. you. Okay. Acrobatic. Oh, actually, I guess I should roll. I need to roll concentration. Yes. Yeah, you would need to. Yeah, because you took damage. <sighs> Hold on. But I rolled a BLM! Yes! <laughs> uh, it doesn't matter because I rolled a 18 on my concentration, so okay. that, that beats the... Okay. Yeah. Okay, so yes. the 18's on your acrobatics, right? Huh? 
the the roll that you just made that was acrobatics, oh. right? Yeah, yeah, that was that was a, yeah. Nat twenty, B eleven. Yeah. Woohoo! Okay, yeah. that's on the acrobatics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, you still have to roll your attack to snatch the gem out of its mouth. So what happens is you flip off this thing, land on its head, reach mm -hmm. inside, grab onto the gem. Now you need to make your attack roll to try to rip it out of this thing's mouth. Okay, come, on, okay, come, okay. On, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, 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 oh. Well, uh, attack, attack. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What's my mouth on that? Oh, okay, okay, okay. That is, that is a 23. Beautiful. So you rip this gem out of its mouth as mm -hmm. it's charging up to do another one of these electrical yes. attacks. And all of you can hear inside of your own heads. No, yeah. not again. <laughs> <laughs> and the gem gets ripped out and the bones crumble beneath you in a pile. Yes. And all of the snakes hiss in unison and then immediately start to retreat. They either go into holes or off into the woods or in the mud or under the water, but they all vanish. Cece's getting and real petty about these snakes, and it's just like, no! <laughs> you're standing there with this gem in your hand, and you can feel the power coursing into your hand. What do okay. you do? Um, I'm gonna square the gem away nice and safe inside, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't want it to move. And okay. um, are other people really, I mean, I've jumped, I've tried to jump back onto the ledge, have I made yeah. that? Uh, yeah, because you rolled a natural 20 on your acrobatics. Okay, so I'll say great. you're able to grab the gem and flip back up on top of the ledge. Okay, cool. Uh, so we're like... technically out of combat at this point, uh, okay. and I, we're at time. So uh, what I'd love to do here, instead of the typical uh, wind down of the story, what I would love to have each person do is tell me what you, you would do next after this scenario. So because, uh, because you have the gem in your grasp, Layla, we'll start with you and then we can work our way around. Think real hard and long about it because this gem is really spicy yeah. and powerful, and I can stealth and dash away. Yeah, you see ah. all you see all of your 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 newfound oh. friends just kind of hanging out there, looking up at you as you ripped this gem out of its mouth. But I mean, Queen Mab's gonna hurt them, so oh, well, definitely. Definitely. <laughs> so I'm gonna kind of like, kind of go, oh, and 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 I'm gonna go down and give the gem to Elodie, <laughs> kind of really reluctantly though. Like it's gonna okay. just to pry it from my cold dead hands. Okay. But, so you yeah. hand it over to Elodie. Elodie, let's go to you. What 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 is your last moment? What are you doing with this gem? What's what's the last moment that you're that you have in the story? Um, Elodie takes. The, the gem in her hands uh, and you can feel the power coursing through your veins uh, she'll take your, a moment your wooden body veins she'll take a moment to consider with and with this warlock power that's flowing through her veins with the queen mab power that's flowing through her veins she's going to take a moment to really uh, realize what she could do with this power herself and if that's worth a wish, or if she could potentially just take this and go up head to head with Queen Mab. Sure. So, what would you what would you decide to do? Because I think that's what everybody's curious about. <laughs> or is this something you'd like to discuss in a cooldown episode? Let's discuss it in a cooldown episode. That's a great okay. idea. Ooh. All right, I like yeah. that. Ooh. Okay, so then. So then uh, we can wrap things up here. Um, Kaylee, uh, Otten, and Fitz, uh, you're just kind of staring at uh, Layla as she hands this gem with all of this magical energy coursing through it over to Elodie. And she grasps onto it and you can see this moment of decision wash over her. And she makes a choice and that's where we will end the Sapphire Lights Festival. Uh, I feel like Fitz just slow mo <laughs> dives towards her, like, no, I'm getting replaced. If that gem yeah. doesn't get back, it's me. Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. becoming a creepy wooden doll. You, you would be the next chosen, the chosen one of Queen Mab. Great oh, job, everybody. That was fun. Yay! Yay!
crammed, crammed, yeah. crammed a lot into those those couple of hours. Yeah, uh, welcome to you. So what I would love to do yeah. is when this airs, uh, I would love to have, uh, if we can get you both, if schedule permits, I would love to have the two thirds of the three black halflings, Unadi and Jasper. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah. Have you on the cool down? Uh, maybe uh, another cool down segment uh with jessica that uh where she talks about what happens with the gem and what happens uh, i'd actually quite to be there if that's okay I'll, I'll be there <laughs> make sure that fits we can do a four-way cool down sure I mean? why not so, so that we get it. Uh, <laughs> let's do it so uh sure breaking the rules uh uh trisha wonderful as always thank you so much for coming to play with us uh, i had a blast uh, please hold on to that character if you ever get to play with this again. I would love to see Kaylee Katar make a, a, a reappearance at some point. Uh, we do have the Team Force of Good and Team Force of Evil to wrap up the show. I know Jessica has to go, but uh, if if the rest of you are game, I would love to bring up that list. And I have a couple suggestions that I've taken from the Patreon. Heck yeah. Um, Hi, Jess. Bye, everybody. Bye, Jess. Bye, Jess. <laughs> I will get the list and send it in the chat. Uh, okay. okay. While she's bringing up that list, uh, um, what I would love to do because I chose some uh, some suggestions from the Patreon that are group based, is that uh, we can do these as a team as opposed to uh, one individual being put on the spot. Especially because you guys have already been such wonderful uh -huh. guests. Um, so let me get the oops. Let me get the list up myself. I think I've got it up. Oh yeah, there we go. it. You see Team Force of Evil and Team Force of Good at the bottom. So we will start with Team uh, Force of Evil. Uh, and this one, the suggestion is from Aaron J. Sussman. Uh, a surgeon's team telling the patient every detailed step of the surgery they're about to perform. Okay. <clears throat> Whenever you're ready. Okay. Uh, well, uh, hello, Mr. Changebox. Uh, it, uh, it seems that your condition is particularly severe. Um, and really? And we need to know if you are down to clown. Uh, yeah. mm -hmm. We're going to have to get right in there and J-Rock. Sorry. Yeah. That sounds I say it's very straight. invasive. Have you, uh, I must ask before we go any further, have you been there any uh, Gorbin uh, plates recently or? Uh... Yes, I, I frequently hang out with a Gorbin plate. Ah, that's a, okay, that's a concern. Oh, I need to, oh, uh, yeah. mm, mm, we, um, to uh, we have to get the uh, Carson in on this one. That's the only way I can actually really? do this. Absolutely, mm. is, is, and, is, is this and going Fernando to be... the Jackal. Oh yes, mm. is, this, is this going to be similar to the surgery that we have recently done on Four Self, uh, where we 86? <laughs> Don't oh, shiny epic boom! Oh. Uh, what? Okay. Don't worry, don't worry. No, 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 no. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Mm. Oh, I think she's nuts too. Mm. Maybe maybe I should postpone this surgery. It's no, no. We are the students dangerous. of Grimm, and we yes. will take good care of you. We will take very good <laughs> care of you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, scalpel. Anastasia. <laughs> uh, oh, reminds reminds me of uh, when I had uh, low budget health insurance. Good times. Oh. Um, not that my health America. insurance is stellar America. now, but hey. Ooh, that's a, that's dark. Great job. Wow. Uh, well, you know. The uh, the medical insurance in the USA is not necessarily what it's cracked up to be, especially mm -hmm. compared to other countries. <laughs> What's it like in the UK? I wonder. Uh, it's better. It's free, it's free and, uh, and <laughs> see and, and good. So you there know, you go. Here it's expensive good. and mediocre. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> cool. There's uh, some good really times. good surgeons here. Let's, let's they're just expensive. good times. So that was Team Force of Evil. And now for Team Force of Good. Uh, yeah. This one is from a concerned citizen of Ein. This one's much more adorable. Uh, a bedtime story to a room full of kids that don't want to go to bed. Aww. Aww. That is okay, cute. Okay, okay, Xander, Xander, you get, just get inside the bed. I'll get you water in a minute. Just, no, um, I want okay. it now. I, I'm going to read you the, the, the gold family, okay? It's your okay. favorite. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You're going to mm -hmm. sit still? 
Are you okay. gonna say okay. Do you want kitty scratches? Do you want kitty scratches to go to bed? I have to Armando 89 again. Oh, oh, oh okay, no. okay. Cool. You just hold on for one second and I'll take you down to the bathroom and you can Armando wait, all you wait, want. Wait, wait, hey, Adrian X just left out of the room. That's not oh, fair. Well, I wanna go out of the room. Hold on a second. Hold on. He'll be he'll be back in a minute. He'll be back in a minute. Oh. Now now I need you all to sit down and listen while I tell you Little the story. Wilbur Junior just picked his nose and I saw it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Wilbur Junior, mm -hmm. stop picking mm -hmm. your nose. Okay. Once. Oh, you got time, an can you, up there. <laughs> are you gonna tell the story where I are Moo Cow? Yeah. 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 That's well, my favorite. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. okay. well, today, today, like I said, we were going to tell the story of the Gold family and maybe mm. starting Cold Candor. Uh, okay. okay. Is, the, is, the, is the Gold family about money? No, oh. no, no. It's about biscuits. Uh, biscuits? Uh, biscuits? Spoken like a choose your just, person. I just want <laughs> biscuits. Wait, are these biscuits or are these cookies? That's, uh, that's what I want to know. Yeah, biscuits. they biscuits or cookies? Tell us now. I don't want cookies. They, they're Bob Harris ginger biscuits. I just oh. want just jewels. Just yeah, jewels. Yeah, we want just jewels. Just jewels. Mm -hmm. just and and jewels. Can, this, can this story involve a dungeon run? Yay! Yay! Yay. Yeah, yeah. It can absolutely yeah. have a dungeon run, Ray. <gasps> and, and oh my and god, they, there's a kitty uh, kitty in the room! Okay, kitty I'll listen! Kitty oh. scratches! Yes! <laughs> um, and yeah. you can all have a little pumpkin uh, tea before you go to bed. Oh, you're gonna have to bribe a, bribe a me to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. Well, no, you have to listen to me because I'm the adult. <laughs> but I'm the adult. I, I will turn into a Mickey Wolf if you don't. So yeah. Well, and my we dad, by your past is gonna <laughs> ground you. Mm -hmm. We know by your past decisions that's that's not a good idea because you land up dazed and confused, little buddy. Yeah, mm -hmm. Bob Harris. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm pretty dazed and confused right now. <laughs> Well, I guess we... Oh, gee, toe. I, I don't know what to do. 17. I don't know what to do about that. <laughs> no. No. Did we get them all? I think so. I think we did. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to forget anybody. I'm pretty sure we did. I, okay, we great. Some of them double even. Yeah. yeah if awesome. we forgot you, we'll we'll give you a special shout out. Also, we there should give a special shout out to our Chrono Dragon references needed, who's oh, our yes. ultimate sponsor. Yes, references needed. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. uh, wow. Who defies the category? Yes, <laughs> definitely. Thank you so much for doing that with us. Yeah, thank it you so much for being guests fun. on the show. You guys were all amazing. And, thank you, Jared. Uh, us. Yeah, sure. nailed it, Jared. Nailed there was, it. Really... There was so much more there, but uh, what, what this is what happens whenever you run a two shot. You have to compact, compact, compact. I yeah. really I really know the feeling. It's a, it's a nightmare. <laughs> it's a real nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I didn't know if I was going to squeeze in the Queen Mab scene, but it was, it was too juicy not to. Uh, but Hell you guys, yeah. you guys did a great job, uh, and and you figured out a way to deal with the fight without having to, you know, literally beat a bone naga into uh, into a pulp. So yeah. good on mm -hmm. you. Yeah, CC uh, was fully down. <laughs> like that was. I had nine HP left. That yeah. that, that real cleared yeah, me out. That was a brutal hit. Yeah, that was yeah. Really, but, really yeah, 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 yeah. Bone nagas are. We're nice. gonna have to cool down. We're gonna have to cool down. Totally, oh, totally. Of course, of course. Can't of course. wait to hear what uh, LED has planned for the gym. <gasps> Uh, well, thank you so much, watchers, for joining us. Uh, I'm pretty sure this is going to air in the be beginning of August, and then we'll have uh, uh, our lovely guests on the cooldown thereafter so that we can discuss all things Dungeon Run, all things Three Black Halfling, and uh, and anything else that might pop up between now and then. Yeah. Uh, but I wanted to personally uh, thank uh, Jeff for uh, and Morgan for taking a break so that I got a chance to run something. This was fun. <laughs> and Ron. Uh, and, and Ron. Uh, for doing all of the amazing uh, artwork for the show, the opening and, uh, oh, and just yeah. for doing uh, kiss. Yeah, the, oh, the background uh, stuff for, uh, for what you're seeing right now. Uh, but as always, uh, wouldn't be a dungeon run if we didn't end the show uh, with a little phrase. Humankind. Be both. Yay. I love it. <laughs> It started, it started, it started, 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 as a simple dungeon run.
a simple dungeon run. Anything is possible. Ah, oh, life is pain. Ah, oh, life is pain.